Thomas. I don't got all day here. Let's get a move on. People are scared. We need to get this one. Follow me. Bodies this way. Ugh, I'm getting too old for this. Don't I know it. You gotta crouch to get under the tape. Hello everyone, and welcome to Condemned Criminal Origins. Uh, this is gonna be something of a stocking stuffer, just a little Halloween treat. And also, my first time, I am doing my intro. Calm down, sir. Uh, and also, the first time I'm attempting a long play style video. I don't know yet uh, if I'm going to have to divide this into parts or if it's all going to be in one. I'm going to try to do it all in one, but nevertheless, it's all going up on the same day. But let's get a move on. Now, this game is somewhat special to me for reasons that I'm going to explain as we go forward. But for now, I'll just tell you the reason I want to do this as a long play for Halloween is because I have actually played this game before. I'm not actually expecting to be too surprised by it, because I've played it a number of times. And there's a reason for that, but I'll go into that more as we go. Come on, let's go. Body's rotten as we speak. And as you can the see... The on duty said there was a mannequin involved, just like the matchmaker. Whole damn city's crawling with sick killers. As you can see, this is a very dark and gritty game. It takes inspiration from movies like Silence of the Lambs and Seven, and we'll see that influence all throughout. Yeah, why do they always have to kill in such maggot-infested dumps? Why can't they pick a nice spot without addicts and gang members for once? Some place not so damn dark. Now just look at these environments. Jeez, Nearly shot the bastard. <sighs> Come on, this place is creeping me out. Now remember, this game came out in 2005, in fact I believe it's by the same developer as Sphere. And it came out on console, so the graphics are surprisingly good. Not so much in the character models, but you'll really see it come through. This game has some of the most impressive environments I've ever seen in a mainstream game release. Did I mention it came out in 2005? I'm kind of trying not to talk so much. This stupid car broke my light. Better turn yours on. I hear you're afraid of the dark. Yeah, I'm trying not to talk so much so that I don't end up uh, cutting this guy off. Believe me, this will not be a problem for most of the game, as we are going to spend the overwhelming majority of it completely alone. And as you can see, there's an immense amount of detail in this. Uh, there's also collectibles we can pick up. You'll see that we have all these side rooms. We have the lining around the bottom of the walls. We have, look, look, outlets. Honest to God outlets. How many games have you seen that do this? But it's all very important. These are all supposed to feel like places that are something you might see in your day-to-day -day life. All of these abandoned locations have this realism to them that makes them so immersive. And so, well, I'm going to stop talking. I'll just let you see for yourself. Becker here. FBI on the scene. Over and out. Copy that. Agent Thomas, this is Officer Becker. Becker found the body on patrol. Agent? You were just patrolling inside this abandoned building? Ah, uh, don't worry, I gotcha. Wink. Seriously, if I were- I, I would love to be like a cop or a security guard, especially a security guard. I would love to be security for an abandoned place. And I'd definitely be taking a lot of pictures during downtime. Thomas. Hello, Thomas. This is Lieutenant Rosa. I'm your lab tech again on this one. Our wireless data transfer system enables you to investigate and collect evidence at the scene of the crime and transmit it to me for analysis. When I have results, I'll contact you via your cell phone. All right, let's get to work. Let's start by determining the cause of death. When your instincts tell you evidence is nearby, prepare a forensic tool. The system will select the correct tool for you, so don't worry about that. And here you see kind of the gimmick mechanic of this game. Fortunately, it's a good gimmick. So we play as an FBI forensic investigator, which means that at times we'll have to use some of our tools 
in order to figure out what we're supposed to do or where we're supposed to be going. Now if I could just figure out how to actually take my tools out. Ah, uh, there we go, T. And we can see here, there's some marks on the neck. And I just press T again to ready the collection tool. Zoom in, and I believe it'll turn green. I believe a light should come on when I'm in a place where I can actually take the picture. Oh, there we go, found the right spot. Sometimes you have to finagle it a little bit in order to get the sweet spot. laser works better in the dark. Oh, and for that matter, why is there power in this building? But now we can see here... Yeah, sometimes these, uh... I don't know whether to call them flashbacks or just visions. Sometimes they'll reveal to you... I think they're supposed to be your, like, instinct. But those will reveal to you where you should be looking for forensic evidence at times. Now... I want to zoom in and get a picture of that. And you can see here, this is a very realistic and very disturbing murder scene. That's it. The same mark. Exact same MO as the others? It's the work of a guy we've been calling the Matchmaker. Kills young women violently, poses them in grisly tableau with male department store mannequins. Mannequin always slightly disfigured by a mark on the face. Any luck on the mug book searches? I bet the killer has the same mark. No luck so far. Becker, no smoking at a crime scene. I don't smoke. Well, someone was. <laughs> it's coming from in here. Uh, hang on, guys. I have to do a little bit more commentary. So, as you can see with this... You know, like I said before, it is taking heavy inspiration from things like Silence of the Lambs and Seven. To expand on that, I feel like one of the biggest themes of this game is basically the descent that a person can go through and basically the depths that a person can reach in cases of, like, extreme poverty or drug addiction or even, even just impoverishment, even just neglect of the mind. Uh, but we'll see a lot more about that as this game progresses. Dang it. I can smell the cigarette smoke. He's right above us. Call for backup now. This is Officer Becker. We need backup immediately. Fourth and start. Potential homicide suspects still in building. Officers are on their way. ETA, ten minutes. Copy that. Becker and I will head up the fire escape. You wait here for backup. Shit. Okay, now he's playing with us. Change of plans. Becca, secure that door. Thomas, check out the building and get these lights back on. All clear, Agent. That gun looks so tiny in the hands of these really blobby the character models. Here, the better. Let's go. Oh, and for Christ's sake, be careful. Agent Thomas, Officer Becker. I don't know if they're on a new drug. 
Roger. Give me that. Thomas Dickinson, there's one coming your way. Addict amped up on something. I don't know how you told that from a floor above, but yeah, if you if you listen to those sound effects, actually, I think there will be a new one in a second. Listen to that sound design. This game has two major things going for it that enable it to be so immersive. Actually, no, I'll, I'll say three. Number one, the environments. They look amazing. Number two, the sound design. Federal agent, come out peacefully or I will use force. Fuck you! And number three, just the attention to de- Oh, right, you can't look down sights, I forgot. And number three, just the attention to detail in every little thing. The city's full of them now, Thomas. Addicts, vagrants, psychotic individuals gone terribly bad. They come in all kinds, but mostly violent. Be careful. Now, I consider the detail and realism to be distinct from the first point, the environments. Because I do think they're two different things. So yes, the environments visually, graphically, look absolutely gorgeous but there's another layer to that we can see radiators we can see furniture just left around we can see outlets on the walls that i pointed out before there's ventilation running above these are all things that make the environments feel oh, i think we're gonna learn about how to do melee okay i can kick enemies by pressing space yes federal agent i am the best at my job and little did we know at the time, this was not unrealistic. And there's a health kit, but I don't need it right now. Now the thing about this is that, uh, to get back onto the train of thought I was just on, if I can find it again. Environments. This seems like a real building. It doesn't feel like it's built to be a game environment. And future levels will kind of, kind of show that even more than this one does. Like, look over there. There's a mattress under the stairs. Someone sleeps here. Someone sleeps under these stairs. There's just such a realism to these environments that goes beyond just the graphics. Now, you are limited to ammo found in weapons. Use wisely. That's one of the big criticisms with this game that people had when it came out. And that's that you can't pick up more ammo for your guns. Once, once a gun runs out of ammo, you either have to switch to a melee weapon or pick up an entirely new gun. There is no reloading. Now, the real reason for that is because it wants you to feel helpless. It wants you... Oh, there's another collectible over there. It wants you mostly using melee weapons. There are not going to be a whole lot of guns at play in this game. I'll tell you that right now. But luckily, the melee combat... Again, it's another, it's another element that serves to enhance the feel of the game. The melee combat is very, very visceral. It works in such a way where you really feel the impact of every hit. Hello. Now I don't have a crosshair. I think that might actually be a setting, but I don't have it enabled if it is one. And I'm going to be keeping it that way. Now, how do I check my ammo? Yes, yeah, so pressing R checks my ammo. I have five bullets left. So that's enough to last me for the next couple of enemies. See, that's the thing, is that I feel like in a game, it can't just have one gimmick feature that makes it so good. It has to be a combination of elements that come together and really make a cohesive whole. And this game has that in spades. I feel like every little piece of this game serves to enhance the overall experience. Where are you at? <laughs> Up, oh, see, it also it also does these little these little weird perception tricks throughout the game. There are things in this game uh, that kind of make you question your sanity. So, for example, I come around this corner. There's nowhere for that guy to really have gone, and yet he's gone. And that's kind of further implied by the fact that I run down this way, and my vision just starts to distort. It's almost like the fear of following him down this way made me start to think that it was darker than it really was. But we'll see... We'll start to see more of those mind screwy elements as the game progresses. I 
Okay, it says activate fuse box to turn lights back on. Where was the fuse box? Right over here. And we can see there's a lit cigarette still on the ground, meaning he was just here. Now he's supposed to be completely in shadow. I think I have my brightness maybe a little bit too high. Maybe I'll turn it down a little bit. The suspect has your gun, track him down. Now this is something I think is really genius in terms of game design, uh, but I'll comment a little bit more on that in a second. Now it's telling me to grab a pipe. Uh, can I get this one? Yes, I can actually grab them off the wall. I didn't remember that you could do that. And occasionally we'll have contextual moments where we have to interact with the environment. Listen to that sound design. I don't know if I've ever played a horror game that did such a terrific job of simulating the sounds of commotion in another room. This game really has... It, it holds up in so many ways, even for how dated it is. Now here is our introduction to melee combat. Uh, now it's probably going to take me a little bit Come on. Ugh, there we go. Uh, the trick with these guys, and I am going to need some time to kind of... Ugh, I am going to need some time to get used to this combat again. Because it really is a skill that you have to learn. See, I can't hold... I can't hold a weapon up... Ah! God. I can't hold a weapon up in the block position. I have to time it just right, which is a little bit annoying, but you do get into a groove. Wow, that eliminated almost all of my health. Uh, I really have to find some health quite soon. Now, how does this compare? When you go to pick up a weapon, it'll tell you how it compares. It does more damage, but I think I maybe want to be faster. But also, is that maybe a benefit? When I block, is that also slower than taking a swing? Maybe not. Maybe I'd rather be faster. I'm not quite sure. But yeah, as I was saying, it very much is a skill learning to fight in this game, and it's something that back in the day I got pretty good at, but that was on console, so I... Besides having lost my muscle memory, I kind of have to relearn everything all over again. Now, some of our investigation tools aren't just for use on uh, on crime scenes. Some of them can also be used to help find collectibles. What these collectibles do, I'm not exactly sure. But you can take something of a completionist attitude towards this game. Now, I was talking a little bit before about why this game is kind of special to me, and I suppose now would be a decent time to exposit on that. Those rats are huge. So, basically, when I was a kid, I... I could not even begin to play horror games. I would just be standing at the beginning, just afraid to move. I remember renting uh, Code Veronica X from Blockbuster once when I was like seven years old. And that was it. I pretty much had enough of horror games. I got up to the graveyard, the zombies came out of the ground, there were a couple of burning ones, and I was absolutely terrified. Just could not progress any further than that. Years later in middle school, I had this interest in horror. But I was still way too afraid to play horror games, so I picked this one up from GameStop. It was quite a few years old by that point. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this head on, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna whatever happens, I'm just gonna deal with it. And I did. And this was how I kinda got over that and got into horror games. Now I actually ended up kind of enjoying the gameplay after a while once I got good. So hopefully we'll be able to recreate that on PC. And it got to the point where I actually replayed the game several times just for the purpose of enjoying the gameplay. Thomas! Thomas! Answer me! What's happened? We heard an explosion. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. It's just a fuse box shorted. I seem to be trapped over here and I believe the suspect has my gun. What? 
How the hell did that happen? I swear I just heard a footstep behind me. <sighs> Here, take this fire axe and chop your way out. You can always find an entry tool somewhere around to get you past barriers. You can even use things like an axe or a sledgehammer as a weapon. They do a great deal of damage, but they're slow. Swinging a lead pipe bus heads faster if that's what you prefer. Thank you, Thanks. Captain Exposition. Yeah, you need the tips. Becker and I'll go around the other way. Try and stay in one piece. Oh, and one more thing. If you find yourself in a sticky situation, use your taser to temporarily stun your target. If you're close enough, you'll find it a great way to disarm the slug of his weapon. All right, thank you. I've been giving, I'm getting on the job training right now, I guess. I did not know I was holding a taser up until this very moment. Thank you. Now, this is another thing people complained about. You have to use specific weapons to chop down certain doors. So sometimes it'll be an axe, sometimes it'll be a sledgehammer. And we can collect these TVs to unlock achievements. Now, in the console versions, uh, there would be whatever console the game was on, that would be hooked up to the TV. So on PS3, it was a PS3. On 360, it was a 360. Not that that matters for us. I guess it's nothing in the PC version. Oh, there's a bird right here. I don't know how I never noticed that. But now we can use this axe to chop through the door. I don't really tend to like using the axe in this game because, yes, it does a lot of damage, but it's so slow. Now listen to that. That That is so loud and so, I don't know, everything is just... The sound design is just engineered in such a way where it sounds so realistic. Everything is... Everything that's loud is, like, appropriately loud. I don't think I'm going to be able to block crap with this thing. Yeah, but if you can successfully block, it will stun them. Which is very useful, and it will give you the in you need to get in a good blow. I'm going to continue carrying it for now. But I really do think I should be carrying something like a pipe or a 2x4 or something, just so that I can get more use to the timing needed to get these blocks just right. Because if I can't figure that out, I'm really going to have a hard time. Oh, but I never got to why to explaining why I think the design in here is so genius. So it starts you off with a firearm. As long as you're armed, nothing can really get close to you. Like, yeah, it's a little bit difficult to aim without aiming down the sights. But I can just pew-pew and get a kill. They really can't take too much of that. But the thing is, it started me off so powerful, and then I lose my gun, and it immediately drops me down. Before I had all the power, now I have none of the power. I'm just like them. I'm another rat in the maze. That's such a good thing to do. Somebody said that uh, if they were to make an Outlast 3, that you should be a cop or something, going, or a federal marshal or something going to investigate whatever's going on, and you should have a gun at first. For the first time in Outlast, you feel powerful. And you could... Hello. Uh, it's a good thing I looked this way or I wouldn't have seen you coming in behind me. No, get over here. Get over here. Where do you think you're going? That's the taser button. Now, if I were smart, I could have taken the weapon out of his hands at that moment. Now, the taser has unlimited ammo, but it also has to recharge, so it's not going to be useful against multiple enemies. And you know, I just... This might be a coincidence, but I just noticed something kind of interesting. Ugh. Come on. Finally. Yeah, I just noticed something kind of interesting. It seemed like he jumped around the corner when I knocked over that bucket. Now, that could just be a coincidence that I reached the point where he would leap around the corner at just that moment, but I wonder if they can actually hear you and kind of form a strategy based around that. I know... See, that's the thing. is Normally, I wouldn't say that, especially about a game from 2005, but these are the developers of Fear... Now, as I was saying, now usually those eyes on the wall indicate that there's a metal piece around. But as I was saying, um, people have said that Outlast 3 should begin with you playing as a federal marshal or something, going to investigate something, and you start with a gun. For the first time in Outlast, you can actually shoot enemies dead, and it's not even close. You're way more powerful than them. 
and then something happens where you lose your gun for the rest of the game. That would be great. Now, some horror games have done the opposite route, where they make you powerful towards the end, and it allows you to get some catharsis in that way. And that can be good, too, but I feel like with horror games... I feel like with horror games, it could work the opposite. It could make you, uh... It could make you feel powerful and then take that away and have you feel even more helpless as a result than if you had just started helpless. Come on. Come on, we gotta use, uh, we gotta use the old splicer advice. Zap them and whack them. There we go. I hear somebody. I think there's somebody else coming in behind me. There you are, see? Oh, that's the power of good sound design. Like, I know you're back here somewhere. I know you are. Come on, come get me. Come on. I want to use you to train. Uh, I was really hoping you would come... ...after me. I was really hoping he would take a swing, because I still have certainly not got the hang of blocking. How does it feel to be on this end of the gun? But listen, you bastard. Don't mess this up for us. We are both on the same path of righteousness. Thomas! <coughs> and the path takes strange turns. Please, police! Drop the weapon now! That Gmod ragdoll. Also, you guys are the worst Agent cops. Thomas, if you weren't anticipating that very thing. Again. Okay, we found four of six birds, two of three metal pieces. Yeah, this is this is the thing I need to be worried about after I was just thrown from a window. Also, he seemed very confident that that wouldn't kill me. Now, I suppose there is a little bit of mystery in it for me, because I don't exactly remember what happens in the story. But anyway, uh, favorite weapon, small pipe, successful hits, 63.2%. Killed 10 enemies. Let's continue. Now, some of the game is actually exposited uh, through these loading screens. As you can see, it says summary. Uh, bodies of dead birds now litter city streets and public parks. Hard-hit areas have reported literally thousands of bodies, while other areas of the city have seen very few birds at all. And that's kind of the thing, is that they said earlier, the city's full of them now. There is kind of a background plot going on that, from what I remember, the game never really goes into. But there's this kind of strange thing happening where... The homeless are getting more violent than they were before, more unhinged. As to why, well, that's kind of a mystery. And I guess we just wake up in our apartment totally unharmed. I never really understood this part. Yeah, I too just sleep in a jacket Hello, with my bag Ethan. around me. Uh, who are you? What is going on? Calm yourself. My name is Malcolm Van Horn. I was a great friend of your father's. Yes, I remember you a long time ago, but why are you here now? Last night? Well, I was nearby. An unfortunate scene. You did your best, but it could not be helped. The detectives? They're dead. Shot with your weapon, and you will be blamed for their deaths. Ridiculous. I'll just tell them- What? Tell them the truth? They have already decided the truth. 
This is insane. I don't think that's how a criminal drug. trial works. It's already been taken from you. Now join me and help yourself. Open up, it's the police. Damn. Take your bag and head across to the metro station. I will meet you later. Agent Thomas, you know you're in there. Open up now. Ethan, you must trust me. I am here to help. Now go. I'm sorry, officer. You woke me from sleep. No, I don't know where Mr. Thomas is. Okay, I suppose we're on here? the run now. My name is Malcolm Van Horn. <laughs> you know, for a game with such great sound design, I can hear you very he clearly. I forgot I was arriving today. Well, please stand clear. We need to search the premises. <laughs> you didn't hear anything. Now the game truly begins. I really hope I don't have to carry this. I really hope I don't have to carry this shovel for too long. I imagine it's a very slow weapon, and I prefer to be faster. Okay, yeah, I can grab this pipe if need be. So I suppose I've been spied on in my apartment. But now this thing is coming up, telling me that... Oh, that's what triggered it. Okay, so, yeah, there's pictures in the garbage can. Although I did play this game a lot of times... Uh, those a lot of times were many years ago, so I don't remember everything. You're a lucky man, Thomas. I'm still here. Thank God. I thought they would have suspended my lab access. They still might. It hasn't occurred to them yet. I didn't kill those guys. I know, Thomas. Well, I'm not certain what I do or don't know, but I'm pretty sure I still trust you. And that goes a long way. Understood. So, what about the photos? Well, no standing on ceremony then. You had a Christmas party in that tiny little apartment? In the metro station? It appears so. I'm also seeing smudges across the face of the photo. Locate a good sample and transmit it to me. Yep, all of this can be done remotely. Okay. Miracle of science, really. These photos were processed here, somewhere within the station. That would be my guess. Okay, locate the room where the photos were processed. Crowbar required. Oh, that means it's going to send a crowbar my way. Yep. What'd I tell you? Now, you, you actually are a good opportunity for me to... Ah. Uh, see, if you can swing that fast, I don't know what I'm meant to do about it. And from what I recall, sometimes they'll even uh, sometimes they'll even swing on the rebound from getting hit. I know there's a method to the madness. I know there's a way to do it. I just hope it's not one of those things where. Oh god! Almost missed you completely. Ugh. I hate these quick time events. Come on. No, come on. I feel like my depth perception is really messed up here. Uh, you know, the combat is actually quite frantic. This is a game that doesn't give you a lot of enemies, but you do need to worry about each and every one, and that's something I do kind of admire about it. Uh, something else I like about it... Look, this is a janky little skinny guy. This guy's got a little bit more beef on him, and there's people later on with even more beef on him. I really do appreciate that there's different body types on enemies in this game. That's just something I like in games in general, and the reason for that is because it kind of makes them feel more real. Like, there's variety without having to have, like, special, like, demon people, you know what I mean? 
And you know what? Looking at that, look, just looking at how much this stands out under the light, I think this right here might be a reference to fear. That's kind of funny. If true. Hello, gun. I'll just be taking that. But before I do that, I need to find me some health. Now, from what I remember, this game is fairly generous with the health. But I could be wrong on that. Or maybe it is in the beginning and it gets less so later on. See, look at this. There's all these objects just around. It makes it feel like some place that people use. It's not just an environment that only exists to be played as a video game. Let's go back and grab this gun. We can always get the crowbar later. And honestly, we can always get any number of melee weapons. There's never a shortage of melee weapons. So I think grabbing a gun is pretty much always the right call. One thing that's important though is we don't want to leave uh, we don't want to leave a loaded gun on the ground if we find something better or find something with more ammo. Because another enemy could always pick it up. Did I just see someone around the corner? Or is that just the way... Is that just shadows in the back? I, I don't know, and that has me a little bit nervous. <laughs> what am I nervous about? Who needs courage when you have a gun? This is Thomas. It's Van Horn. Listen and be quiet. I don't have long. The police are now searching, or more properly destroying your apartment. They seem to have no faith in your innocence. But I am innocent. I know that. talent, a gift that very few of us have. We haven't time to discuss this fully, but trust your instincts. Rely on them. I must go now. Remain alert. Yeah, I don't really buy the whole they think it was me 100% because it, they were killed with my gun. Like, yes, I went to the job with them, took out a bunch of homeless people with them as normal, because apparently that's normal. And then shot them both before throwing myself out a window. Oh, and that also doesn't explain who committed the actual murder that we were investigating. Hello? Come on, let me around you, boxes. Boxes, an impenetrable fortress. I was right as a kid. Uh... <laughs> I think the animations are going a little bit wonky there. A little bit of a clipping issue. Alright, where are you at? I don't see you, but I certainly hear you. Crap! Bang. Bang. Your little ambush didn't go as planned, huh? I have one bullet left. Okay, um... It's a little bit of an issue then. I have one bullet left. I would hate to expend it, or I would hate to not use it. But at the same time, okay, I need a sledgehammer to break this, and there's a note taped to the wall saying keep away on loose leaf paper. Which means that is not an official note. Anyway, I would hate to not use that last bullet, but more importantly, I would hate to leave it on the ground and have somebody else pick it up. Can I open this door as well? No, I can't. It looks like it's blocked. But I can see the sledgehammer on the other side. Alright, wee-woo. See, look at this. This looks like a break room. It looks like a real place. I've been talking about this a lot recently, but properly scaled environments just make all the difference. Especially when it comes to horror, but I think it's something that should be... I think it's something that should be seriously looked at by developers and people kind of studying what makes games work. Oh, okay. I have to head back downstairs. I don't see any other doors I can open, but it seems so counterintuitive. Like, how do I open this? There's got to be some way in there, right? 
I can sprint, but it's not really much of a sprint. I'm not really sure what I'm meant to do with it. Because it doesn't seem like it would be useful for evading enemies or anything like that. Is somebody going to drop down through the ceiling? No, not this time. Could always happen later, though. I definitely want to check around every corner because... I want to keep an eye out down that hall, but... Hello. How's that working out for you? And now once you run out of ammo, you switch to using the gun as a melee weapon, and I think it'll break after a few hits. Or maybe that's not until Condemned 2. Now, how many shells do I have? Three. But they should do quite a bit more damage. Hello, beef boy. Ow! Yeah, they can have guns too. And now I have one shell left, but unfortunately that leaves me with a little bit of a predicament because now there's a gun on the ground with. Oh, also one bullet. Yeah, I'm just gonna fire that into the air and continue on with my shotgun shell. Singular. My one singular shotgun shell. Now, have I explored this environment completely? I can't help but notice I haven't actually found any collectibles yet. That door doesn't open. What? What? Yeah, this game has just as many people s scurrying about as it does actually attacking you. Now oh, there's another sledgehammer right there. And I can unlock this door from behind, so that creates a shortcut. Not that I think I'll be spending too much more time in this area if I don't have to. I can break that open and use the health kit, but I don't really need it at this time. Now, like I said before, these eyes typically indicate a hidden metal piece. And I can't push this table out of the way. All right, well, I don't think I'm going to be attacked with a shotgun. I don't think anybody's going to come back here and pick it up. Watch me eat my words. What? What? I think there's two in here. I think there's two. Yes, there's one behind that wall, and there's another one on my right. And this is not the weapon I want for this. It's just way too slow for my taste. Maybe I should have left that health kit for later. I think there's more somewhere. But even still. Alright, you first. Yep. See how this combat really is very... You kind of have to strategize. You gotta time everything just right. And anticipate their attacks. It really is all about preserving that stamina so you know the exact right moment to strike. Now, I'd like to swap this weapon out for something else, but I think I'll have to carry it a little bit longer so I can just do this. Hello, that's a mannequin arm. Oh, and I can pick it up as a weapon. Here, I was thinking I would probably have to use some kind of, uh, some kind of forensics tool. Can I open these lockers? No. For a second, I thought that was my own stomach rumbling, but I think that's in-game audio. Where are you at? I think I just heard the sound of that bottle rattling. I think, yeah, somebody just came through here. Somebody just came through here. I love the sound in this game. You just heard somebody running down the halls and somewhere in that direction. It always makes it feel like there's people around you. Even if you can't see anything. Even if there aren't actually any enemies active. It always makes you feel like there's somebody around. You never feel alone. Thomas speaking. Ethan, it's Van Horn. How do you know this number anyway? I know many things about you, Ethan. 
At your father's death, I've watched you, hoping that you would find your potential. My potential? Yes. You've become an excellent investigator. Not through training or luck, but instinctually. However, you'll find that you are capable of seeing through much more. Again with the instincts. They're a gift from, well, perhaps not from God. Remember, they can help you and others. Again, I must go. Be careful. Okie dokie. Yeah. Oh, crowbar required. I can break into the safe. And there's a health pack right there. We'll keep that in mind. Okay, so I guess we're on the lookout for a crowbar then. Puzzle solved! Thank you. Alright, actually, I'm kind of curious to know how the crowbar compares. Okay, so it's... It does less damage than the pipe, actually. But it's faster and better block. Now, I wonder if plus block, if that means that... When I go like this, if it stays up in the air for a little bit longer? Never mind, we got ourselves another shotgun. With three shells, so I might be back for that crowbar. Oh, look at this environment. <laughs> That's a really high kick. That is such a high kick. That is comedic, almost. Investigate. Your gas spectrometer is detecting a decaying bird carcass. Well, don't spoil it. Oh. So I am not always safe at times when I have a, de a detection tool out. Okay, come over here. I'd like to expend my ammo right here so that I can go pick up that crowbar, if you don't mind. Uh, you appear to just be heading out. I do have that SWAT instinct in me where I have to wait for them to give me a reason. Oh, listen to that sound echoing throughout the room. Come on! <laughs> he just leapt into the air and got shot out of it. I'm just shooting homeless skeet right now. Uh, you know, if I comment on too many of these enemies, <laughs> this is going to come off as the most classist Let's Play ever. Oh, I can't even go back? That is so annoying. It actually locked the door behind me? Why? I guess it might have loaded a new area when I ducked under this. All right, now back to the gas spectrometer. It's detecting a bird carcass. Where is it at? Uh, this functions as sort of a hot or colder minigame. Oh, nope, we're getting colder. Ah, over here. There it is. Now, as it said before, these bird carcasses are relevant because whatever is going on in the city with the homeless... It seems to be affecting birds as well, with all kinds of bird carcasses showing up everywhere. It's said in some cases even dying by the thousands. And we saw that earlier when all those crows were flying into the window of my apartment. Okay, we got health over here. Want to put a pin in that. Yeah, I'll have a number nine. Oh, wait, you're violent. That did nothing. Ah, uh, see. Ah, uh, I gotta learn to anticipate those rebound swings. That's, I have a feeling that's gonna be the most difficult thing. And now a little context menu will show up when they're stunned like that. Oh, you killed somebody else as well. And that's another thing. Sometimes they will actually fight each other. If you skedaddle, they'll fight each other. They're not really... Hello? I mean, it's not like they're... A... It's not like they're a united front trying to stop this FBI agent from catching a serial killer. They don't care. They're just a bunch of violent whack jobs. 
I think the depth perception is a little bit weird too, because I think I blocked one of his hits, but it felt like I was really, really far away. Oh, now it wants me to pull out an investigation tool, but, uh... Is now really the time for that? I don't feel particularly safe. Awaiting transfer. Oh, I, I guess I have to follow it. Well, this probably comes out on the other side, right? Where are you? Oh, you're coming in. What was that? What? That didn't even look like a person. And then again, I suppose people can get to the point where they don't even look like a person. Sledgehammer required. If I were to speculate... Oh, that's locked behind me. If I were to speculate, I would guess one of those TVs is probably in there. Oh, dude, that did nothing again. Okay, note to self, I can't interrupt. Yep, damage each other, please. Come on. It annoys me so much that you can't leave it held up. I mean, I know you're supposed to get the timings down, but, like, what is actually wrong with me? What is actually wrong with me that this is a temporary action? Okay, just pull the sledgehammer out of the garbage, which seems like it would require... Oh, never mind. <laughs> I thought it was just going to appear in my inventory. Which would have raised the question of how did I actually get that out of here without some finesse? And where was that door? Right here. And got to be on the lookout for some health now as well. Speak of the devil. Move object. Shotgun! With only two shells, but it's still better than nothing. Now, it's telling me to pull out the investigate tool, but I already know that there's a trail on the ground right here. I just want to make sure it goes the way I'm heading. Okay, so it does head down the staircase, which means I'm on the right track. I also appreciate how it does these little corners like this. Just a small little detail that helps to put you on edge as you progress. And I like how the common enemies will hide. It's not like just a few scripted scares here and there where they'll hide around a corner. They'll all do it. And so it means you do have to constantly be on the lookout. It's really gonna... It's really gonna give me that notification every time I walk over the trail, huh? This game is also one of the rare few that has the restraint to go a surprisingly long time without throwing enemies at you. It knows when... It knows when to do build-up and when to do payoff. For the most part. I'm not going to say that it's anywhere near a perfect game. But I am going to say that it's definitely one of the better ones, and definitely an example of the horror genre that should be studied by people that are trying to make gritty and realistic games. Howdy. Oh, how did that miss? It almost looked like there was some gore in it, but... Confiscating your weapon? The problem with taking their weapon is that I think that does enable them to do those quick time event attacks. Which I'm not sure I can actually do anything about. Now, we've seen a couple of these things. Uh, yeah, it wants me to climb down, but as we all know, climbing down is usually not a good idea in horror games. Is there anything out here that I need to get? Did one of you maybe drop something that I can use? No, just a pipe. What's the point of... Oh, there's the fire axe. There is the fire axe. So why do I have to climb down, then? It seems like I can just use this to break down all those doors. Hi! Or I could have just gotten yours. Did I perhaps hear more footsteps? There you are. If you could just give my taser a moment to recharge, thank you, sir. Yeah, this fire axe is pretty good when used in tandem with a... When used in tandem with... I can't even words right now when I'm trying to progress. It's pretty good when you use it with a fire axe or some other high damage weapon. 
Now I want to go all the way back because there were two doors I had to break down. There was this one, and there was another one farther back. And maybe the other one farther back was actually the same door, I'm not sure. Maybe it's just another side to the same room. Nope. Okay, so what was the one that was all the way back here? Now what this is trying to tell me is that the fluid goes to the elevator. So I guess I need to be restoring power. Actually, if I do have to restore power, that notice was probably on the screen at some point. Oh, it's just another one of these achievement rooms. Anything else in here for me to pick up? No, just another health kit. Okay, so... With that said, there's nowhere else really for me to go. Except downstairs. See, I feel like the stamina is only really useful for those times when you want to be just a little bit faster in moving through the environment. I don't see it see being useful enough to serve any real purpose as far as evading enemies or anything like that. I don't trust things like this. And I can't crouch at all myself, so... It just makes me think something's gonna come skittering out of there. Oh, I see some eyes on that wall. I think there's a piece of metal there. Thank you. I don't know if anything happens if you collect all the collectibles within a level. No, there's nothing here. So what do I have to do? Is there some button I was supposed to press somewhere? This seems like it just serves as like a shortcut between areas. You guys, I'm so paranoid right now. I'm just constantly looking over at my recording to make sure that I have levels on every track because I would really hate for a long play to happen what happened to me on the on the Lost in Vivo Part 4 video. Uh, for those that don't know, I, I did the whole hour and a half last part of Lost in Vivo, and at the end I realized that it hadn't recorded any of the game audio. And so what I had to do was go back, download some soundtracks and no commentary playthroughs, and basically go through and reconstruct the entire audio for the last hour and a half of the game. Manually, in editing. Basically delayed the game by about ten... Uh, delayed the video by about ten days. Now what am I supposed to be doing right now? I, I know I'm supposed to be restoring power to that elevator, but... Is there something I'm supposed to press? You know what, maybe there was something... Maybe there was something in that room that I had to break down the doors, because before that, the limiting factor was I didn't have an axe. So, yes, here we go. When it, whenever you're trying to figure out how to progress in games, I find it's really helpful to think to yourself, what was the last, what was the last bit of progress that I made, and what did that open up for me to do? So when I entered this area, I was looking for the axe, and I got an axe, and that enabled me to break down those fire doors, or those fire axable doors. So the logic going forward then is, okay, there's got to be something behind one of those doors that I need to progress. Even if I didn't see it the first time. And we're back in the offices. Oh, this is window is giving me flashbacks. A couple of days ago, I uploaded the uh, I uploaded the video for Beyond Seeing Hospital, and there's a window that part of the movie was filmed in that looks a lot like this. Only it's not on the ground; it's a little bit higher up on the wall. That was an exploration video where I and uh, I and Skippy explored it. Explored it, and oh, that jump scared me a lot more than I was expecting. And look at that, look how the light actually swings around 
and is cast all over the walls and the shadows move and ah, oh, such a good game. Did I mention this was made in 2005? But yeah, basically Skippy and I explored an old hospital that was used uh, for this old movie called uh, Eyes Beyond Seeing. And it had a window a lot like that. Now you can be opened with a crowbar, right? I bet you're going to have another shotgun. Ah! Ugh. Scared me. And I hope I scared you. There's another one. Now, spaces like this, they really kind of give me the heebie-jeebies, because I've talked a little bit before about how completeness informa of information is one of the key things that allows something to go from creepy to comfy. And this is an area where we have that completeness of information. I can see through this entire area, but not fully. And furthermore, because there's glass on these windows, it disincentivizes me from turning on the flashlight because all that light gets reflected right back at me. So even though I can technically physically see the area around me, I still can't I still can't see through the dark without blinding myself. Let's open you up. 45 cal, how much ammo? Five bullets. Is that really worth dropping the crowbar for? I mean kind of. Kind of, but I feel like the crowbar is a really nice weapon, and this is going to be gone after, at most, two enemies. Ow! Oh, you have a gun. Never mind, I need this. Execution. Now that leaves me with only two bullets. Okay. Luckily, that means we are going to be able to go back and pick up the crowbar before we're locked out of this area again. We know now that we are going to get locked out of areas uh, very shortly after we progress, so we might as well just use whatever, whatever health we find. And yes, I am aware that I'm breaking my own advice by not taking the health that was on the wall over here. Now, I'm not going to go for a complete completionist run here. Obviously, we've already missed plenty of collectibles. That is a sledgehammer lock, not a crowbar lock. That lock will not break on contact with a crowbar, only a sledgehammer. Just like certain walls will only be break broken down on contact with certain specific tools. It's just, it's just the way the world is, I suppose. But anyway, as I was saying, I'm not going to go for a total completionist run, but I am going to look for as many collectibles as I can find. Sledgehammer. Now, this this bathroom stall in a horror game helpfully subverts the usual expectations by just... I hear you. Helpfully subverts the usual expectations by just not having doors on the stalls. Remember, communal pooping is safe pooping. Can't open you. Now, what was I looking for? Where was that lock? It was on one of those... It was on one of those first aid boxes. I know you're on the other side of that wall. Here it is. Oh, it's just... It's just more first aid. Well, I suppose I might as well take one. But other than that, it seems that this was more or less just a ploy to get me to drop the crowbar. Luckily, I'm not falling for it. Where are you? Are you down here? Oh, oh my! Oh my! Oh! Okay. Okay, maybe there are some scares I don't remember. Uh, but there's another metal piece. I think this will actually be the last metal piece of this segment. I think there's, I think in every segment there's three metal pieces and six birds.
Was that? I know I just saw this door close. There's somebody in here. Silence came the reply. There's somebody in there. Okay, well I got all metal pieces for this part. I just pushed somebody aside. Uh, I'm gonna be so paranoid about that. Uh, it's given me a couple different ways to go. The levels are designed in such a way where there's they're not strictly linear. It always leaves somewhere for the bad guys to hide. Is there something I'm supposed to do over here? This is the room. That's my apartment over there. He's been listening in on, like, conversations? What if the guy in the other locker was uh, was a magician and popped out of this one? That would actually kind of be more funny than scary, but also scary. And don't can't discount the scary. All right, let's gonna move on. Did that sound come from back here? Oh, oh. What's going on? I think that's the guy. Well, I... What's going on? I'm a little bit proud of myself, though. I did do pretty well in the combat just now. Blocked every hit. What's going on? I don't remember this. Oh, there he is! Uh... Okay, after him, I guess. I kind of feel like he had a lot of time to get away from me. Wait, this is a completely new area. Uh, where are you at? I don't want to chase after him too quickly. Not that I can with this pathetic sprint, but... I also don't know when it's going to throw an enemy at me right around a corner. Oh, there he goes. And he's hopping like a wounded gorilla. Something else of note. This is a fairly intense moment. There's the killer. I gotta chase him down. And yet there's no soundtrack. It's still only relying on ambient sounds. Now it almost seems like... It almost seems like soundtrack would be really appropriate here, even in a more subtle game. But it really is that committed to allowing the atmosphere to speak for itself. Uh. Now, like I said, I do remember the events of the game in broad strokes. But what I don't remember is where all of this is leading, what the meaning of these hallucinations is. 
and I'm not sure if I just saw somebody hiding around a corner in the distance, but I'm going to ignore that for now. Remember, we've already seen this game is not above spawning guys behind me. Oh, that's the end of the level. Ripple TV Xbox 360. Okay, so I guess maybe the PC version is a port of the 360 version. And that's just like an oversight that they forgot to fix. Because the model of the Xbox isn't actually next to the TVs like it is in the console version. But it still says it in the end screen. Alright, continue on. There's not really much value in these statistics, I find. According to Dr. Feldman Bhutan... Sorry, Dr. Feldman Brutan... University social sociologist, city locations with the greatest number of bird deaths match exactly to those experiencing high criminal activity. Uh, sorry if I sounded a little weird in that uh, last few seconds. I had such a big bubble in my throat. I should learn by now to just kind of clear it instead of trying to talk through it. Oh, joy. Hey. <laughs> the door just shut me out. Uh, here we are heading underground. Yeah, basically the whole first half of this game is spent uh, in subways and sewers. Which I'm not a huge fan of. I'm, I'm just, for me personally, I don't know what it is. I just don't like underground segments in games. For me, they feel like a distraction in a way. But once we get through all these, then we're going to get to see the abandoned locations that this game is so well known for. We got a corpse at the bottom of the escalator. Do I trust it? That remains to be seen. Wow, I am walking pathetically slow down this escalator. Small pipe. Yeah, I warned you about the stairs, bro. I think there's someone sitting on that bench over there. And there's, there, it says, see, it says up there, there he is, follow him. I think that's meant to light a fire under me so that I'll run up to him and then I'll turn and that guy will get up, right? Let's just see. Oh, here he is shrekking those guys. Now, have you gotten up? I'm actually going to try and just leave you, if that's at all possible. But I think I have to go over there. That looks like a box on the wall that might contain a fire axe. Yep. Well, I guess I'm heading back this way. Sometimes the, sometimes the best scares are the simplest. Oh, triggered you. you want this, uh, uh. Don't you pick. Yes, I do. <laughs> I'll take yours. Why not? Oh, you have a gun. You have a gun. You have a gun. You have a gun. Oh, that took like all my health. Die, please. Please. Oh. Who else? Yep. Never bring a sign to a gunfight. Unfortunately, that kind of leaves me back at square one. Oh, my goodness. Is there any health around here that I can pick up? I think I might have to progress in order to find some. What is... This is the second time this game has done this. That's... ominous. Oh, this is the second time this game has done the thing where... It gives me a weapon... Or it gives me some weapon that I need to progress. I get to where I need to go to get it. And then it just sends an enemy with one at me right away. Now, is this... This looks like one of those old-timey shoeshine stations. Now, is this something that they still have in subway stations? Or is this meant to show me that this place really is just that old? It doesn't seem to really be abandoned. But it's clearly not quite up to date, either. I definitely want a conduit. I want something that's a little bit faster than an axe, even if it doesn't do quite as much damage. 
Although perhaps it's clear that my weak point is in blocking. So I should probably be thinking more about that. That's a stat that I should probably care more about. Because, yeah, maybe some weapons don't do as much damage as others, but... Either way, the enemies are going to die fairly quickly. So what I really should be doing... ...is worrying more about preserving my own health. There's those guys. Okay, I'm on the other side now. Those are the two guys he killed. Hello? <laughs> yeah, there's some change for you. He changed you from alive to dead. Ow. Oh, they have, like, incredible... I'm dead. They have, like, incredible reach. It's way, way farther than what you'd think it would be. It's really, really annoying. Okay, how much do I have to redo? Okay, I'm right back here. Uh, and if I, if I interrupt, like, a scripted moment, it just, like, doesn't do anything. The taser is ineffective at... That was not your typical vagrant. Okay, well, I'm sure it's not important. We'll never see anything of that again. You're not the best at hiding, are you? I didn't hear a gunshot, but I'm assuming that that was meant to be a gunshot, so I'm going to hide around this corner, utilize their tactics against them, and wait for you to come at me, bruh. You are wholly unarmed. You're not who I need to be dealing with right now. Oh, that strobe. That strobe is really uncomfortable right now. Ow. Die, please. Thank you. Mother of God, it better be giving me some health very, very soon. Move object. Well, that would have been useful a moment ago. How many? Ooh, it's full. It's full. It has five shells. I'm going to take this moment to take a sip of water. Yeah, normally if I'm going to have a drink, I would edit that out, but this being a long play, and this just being something I kind of do in between videos, because, of course, the week of Halloween, I'm just continuing my regular upload schedule while still trying to get, like, two or three videos out on Halloween. So I really want to spend as little time with this in editing as possible. It's already going to take forever to render. Howdy! Ow! I feel like you took an unrealistic amount of punishment. Now, I already came through here. Which means, hello? You also armed? You are also armed. Yeah, what is it with everybody having shotguns? It's like in Grand Theft Auto, how in order to save, like, VRAM or something, once you see one car, you start seeing it everywhere. I feel like this game is doing the same thing with guns. How much ammo in you? Four shells, not bad. I think there was another health kit back this way. Thank you. I'm doing an awful lot of backtracking, and, and I'm not backtracking a long way, but it feels like a long way. Every little bit feels like a long way because of how slowly I move. Oh, that's just fine. Yeah, no, nothing to worry about here. There is a lot more going on with this place than just homelessness. Now, did I already grab a metal piece from here? Or am I meant to understand that that guy ran off with a metal piece? I honestly can't remember, but there's some of those eyes on the wall. Oh. I bet I have to... Pick up a fire axe so I can get to the other side of that wall. 
and that's where the metal piece will be. Did any of you... No, I can grab the sign off the wall, but did any of you drop a fire axe? I'm backtracking a really long way, but I have a feeling that if I just advance a little bit, I'll probably find one up ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to look for one up ahead. And if I don't find it, you know, not getting a metal piece isn't really a big deal to me. Actually, one other issue with uh, with this being a long play, and one that I intend to not really edit so much, is that I kind of have an obligation to keep the commentary going. I can't, uh, I can't just not talk through large segments like I usually do. Yeah, here's the fire axe. In fact, it's kind of making it seem now like that's actually the way I'm supposed to go. It's not just a little side feature. Which means, unfortunately, that I can't really get at that shotgun over there. Come on, let me through. Those guns actually almost feel kind of like a liability at times. Because I'm liable to take hits while I'm trying to aim. Crowbar would always like one of these. And it gives me another shotgun with four shells. Oh, well, it saves me the trouble of having to go back, but... Okay, so that's where we're going. And I said that like I have any idea where that is. What was that noise? That wasn't just screaming. That that had like a whole like warping sound to it. Alright, I'm gonna expend this right up ahead. Come at me. Where are the rest of you? I hope that door didn't close behind me because I really do want that crowbar. Two shells left. I'm just going to take the crowbar. So far, I've I've lost basically every crowbar I've had the pleasure of picking up. Why do all the good crowbars always leave me? Hi. You know what they say, never bring a gun to a taser and crowbar fight. Stop. I hate that they have rebound reactions on, uh... on firearms. It's really, really annoying. What is this? This is a very odd design for a subway. But I can see another metal piece down there. And a bird right here. Yeah, just pick up a live bird and stuff it in my pocket. Climb over chain. Ouch. I'm alive? You're still alive? I know, right? <laughs> Good teamwork. Ow. Very, very bad teamwork now. <laughs> that is so hilarious. So that's twice now. I've blocked a hit. That was really funny to me. So, ow! Ah, oh, sign man, you're the one. You're the one that hurt me a second ago. I have to be very, very careful here. This is a very difficult combat segment. Did you just see that corpse slide out from behind that pillar? Okay, it's throwing a lot of things at me. I can't really risk trying to engage this guy in direct combat right now. I need to wait for my taser to recharge. And kind of flank him and get him that way. Oh, but he's not allowing himself to be flanked. Wait for the taser to recharge. I don't have the health to be playing around. No! Oh, come on! See, the problem is it's blocking is so unreliable. I feel like the timing is different, like, every time. Okay, I guess we have to do all of that again. And just heal up that little bit of health. It actually took health from me. 
That is so unfair. Him hitting me in that cutscene actually took health away from me. Alright, let's deal with you first as he waddles down the stairs. It's a hit on you. There's somebody behind me now. Alright, come on. Fight each other. I'd like you as much as possible to fight each other. Thank you. Come on. See, I don't know if I even could have blocked that. And as before, I'm completely out of health, and that's with... Yeah, it's happening again. What is... Is that a bug, or is that something I was actually supposed to see? Because again, it's happened twice now. Uh, but anyway, to finish my thought from earlier, I thought it was really funny how before one of the guys was running up to me, right after that good followed by bad teamwork. He went to, to the two of them were ganging up on me. One of them went to swing at me. I blocked it, and his attack bounced off my crowbar and hit the guy that was coming up behind him in the face. That was pretty funny. Okay, health. And from the looks of it, I'm going to have to use both of these. Looks like there's another bird right there. And more enemies beyond. There's still one of you about. Oh, and you! You know, I feel like you really haven't gotten as much of a as much of a lead on me as you could have. Uh, it is it it is really frustrating me right now how slowly I move. Okay, I guess we're doing this now. But there's very conspicuously no sound for this train. That's a little bit of immersion breaking. Yeah, the sound is actually just complete. Well, we have sound on the sparks, but yeah, this train is just moving completely soundlessly down the tracks. That's... I wonder if I have to verify my game files. I hope this doesn't happen a whole lot in this game. I hope there's not a lot of missing sounds. If so, that could actually explain why there was no soundtrack earlier, even though it felt like there should have been. But I don't think I've been missing any other soundtracks, so that's unlikely to be the case. <laughs> yeah, this whole segment kind of... I imagine the sounds are supposed to be building as we run away and go faster and faster down this track. Much faster than a subway actually goes in real life, I think. Yeah, all the sound is just completely out of whack right now. Can't actually. Come on. Yep, goodbye. None of the sounds are really working correctly here. Yep, none of this is landing the way it's supposed to. Well, that took like half my health. Yep, he's still moving. That's. I'm glad you interrupted this segment to tell me that. This is such a bizarre sequence due to the lack of sound. Uh, but that but that train has sound. Uh, all right, moving on. Initial reports indicate that the birds are perishing from sudden massive brain hemorrhaging. As one scientist has said, for some reason, their brains are simply dissolving. Well, that's cause for concern. Investigate, press ready tool. Oh, nope, I have all my health back. And I have to find the source of the odor. Oh, do I have to progress down the track in this video game? Truly, you're telling me things I could never have figured out on my own without the latest in forensic investigation tools. I'm also without a weapon. I'll have to come over here and look for one. 
Oh, there's another one of those little skittery boys. And a weapon for me. Now, I just had the idea to check, and it doesn't seem that things like swinging or kicking, it doesn't seem like they actually cost me any stamina. I just saw... Come on, where, where are you? Come on. You don't even look like a person. I, I just saw a friendo appear in front of me. You guys saw that, right? Just kind of a model kind of glitch into the hall right here. Of course, in horror games, there's often a very fine line between a bug and a scare. Any ammo? Five shells. Very good, but those guys die quite easily. So maybe it's kind of a waste to use the shells on them? Then again, it's not like I can come back and get them. Alright, where are you at? Where are you at? I have one. Anybody else? See, I'm not super enthusiastic about the early part of this game. Because, like I said before, it, it's just something about underground segments where my brain just immediately shuts off. Later on, we're going to start to see some truly nice-looking places. Is there someone up there? Uh, ow! Die, please. So you guys, stop! Come on. There's also a very low FOV. I wonder if I actually have the ability to increase that. I haven't really taken a good look at the options. Okay, so I need to find a shovel. Needs to find me a shovel. There's one right there. Now the more pressing concern is where do I get myself some health? still have only one shell left in this thing. I think I missed one shot, but look, this is me sprinting right now. Me, me coming up that ramp, that was me sprinting. Absolutely pathetic. It makes me wonder why it's even in the game. Now there's another shotgun and another TV over that way. Come on. Aiming is very, very difficult. Come on, die, please, thank you. Okay, so from now on, I'm not even going to bother using a weapon on those guys, because it seems like it seems like they die in one hit. Now, I imagine that's meant to tell me... Oh, no, I see you up there. Uh, hey. Hey, Grandma. Uh, getting up for a midnight snack? Maybe a glass of water? You seem like you've got this figured out. I'm just gonna get a move on and grab that shovel. This gameplay is too long for me to for me to linger. Wait, where's Hang on, I feel all turned around now. So down here is where the shovel is, right? Which means that I have to come back this way. That was a lot more than the sound of just me picking up a shovel. Nope, you're not allowed weapons. That's a conduit. That's actually a weapon that I really would like to have. Get back here, bucko. Thank you. But, can't put it down just yet because I have to break open this door. But this wasn't the only one, there was another one. Yes, let's open up you. And it looks like there's some health back there, something that I desperately, desperately need right now. Now, sure, it can make you question your sanity to see enemies in locked areas that you haven't been to yet, and that seemingly have nowhere to go in them. But also, think about it. These people are in such a state. They're nimble. They're crawling around. They're living in the walls. 
they know ways around that you might not even consider. And that's something that really does come across, even within the gameplay. Now, I opened this up, and that leads to a ladder, so this is the way I'm supposed to be going. I definitely hear the sound of what sounds like somebody dragging or clanking some metal object which I imagine will be used against me in the near future. Hello, Stomp. You're still down there. Now I probably have to drop down here, but what about that other ladder? Where does that go? Actually, this might lead down to the area with the TV and the shotgun. No, it's a whole other area, so... Okay, when I have all these different ways I can be going... I have no idea where it actually is that I'm supposed to go. So this drops me down here, but I've clearly been here before because there's all these bodies. I am so confused right now. I suppose if I had forgotten, like, a weapon or something back there, but then again, what would I want to pick up? There's a whole lot of different directions I can be heading right now, and that always kind of tends to overwhelm me. Right, let's jump down. I'm willing to let bygones be bygones with Grandma, so long as he doesn't, as long as she doesn't pick up a weapon and try to kill me. Now I imagine those sparks on the ground are meant to indicate areas I cannot go. To tell me that I can't progress any further down the tracks than those parts. Now I assume... This is meant to be the train that I fell off of. Meaning that our killer is around here somewhere. Search subway car for clues. Yes, this is the right one. We're connected, Thomas. Transfer data when ready. Now, this is something that uh, Condemned 2, for as much as people don't like it, Condemned 2 really, really improved upon the forensic investigations. Not only did they expand upon the things that are available to do, but it also integrated it more with gameplay. And here... There's really not much more to it than just looking around for what you're supposed to do and what you're supposed to do next. In Condemned 2, they come with little quizzes which, while aren't exactly great design, at least feel a little bit more involved than the stuff we're doing in this game. Find organic evidence that glows purple. Okay, well I've been all up and down this car already. What is it that I'm looking for? I've tried looking... That'll do it. What was that? The door's sample. closed. I can't get a read on the prince. Too smudged. Get a sample, though. He's scared and sweating like a horse. Okay, I guess we're doing more investigation. Once again, in total awe that all of this can be done completely okay. remotely. Initiating a DNA profile on the sample. This will take a while. Can you keep <laughs> Yeah, okay, you do that lab work while he runs away right there. Hang on, we're investigating to find out if it's you. <laughs> Some of these walking animations truly are just comedic. Alright, how am I how am I dealing with this? Yeah, actually no, you guys you guys have your little bum fight out there. I'd rather you guys just kill and maim yourselves as much as possible before I ever have to deal with you. Yes, thank you. It almost seems it almost makes me wonder if maybe the animations are in some way tied to frame rate. 
because every time I've blocked, it felt like I shouldn't have had a successful block. And every time I haven't, it's felt like it's felt like I should have. So I don't know, maybe there is some aspect of that that's tied to frame rate. Because I'm running this at 120 FPS. Recording in 60. Zap. Thank you, sir. Bit of an anticlimax after I just saw you take on about 15 ravenous hobos. Now I imagine the reason it's giving me this guy is because I'm going to have to use the sledgehammer to break something open. Okay, I was going to be really, really annoyed if it was going to make me go all the way back there just to get the shovel. <laughs> okay, I guess he decided on a change of clothes. Which is about the amount of time that I've been giving him. I think in Condemned 2 you could actually pull the lid off the toilet seats. Prepare collection tool. Wait, what do you want me to look at? What is it that you're... Received. It's a train schedule, but there's some shadows. Running it through graphics enhancement. This is his rat hole, all right. It has to be. I found his overalls next to his locker. Master travels light, doesn't he? Keep looking around. He's got to have more than a locker to play with. I'll get back to you once I clean up this image. Kick out wall fan and climb through. Oh yes, that's clearly a much better solution than just busting the store down. Clearly. Okie doke. Where are you? Okay, you've given me you've given me the situation where if I don't if I don't monitor both corridors, I could very easily be flanked from behind. And that looks like one of those fire axe doors. And you took the fire axe, didn't you? Oh, lordy Lou. Okay, there, it said grab conduit. Hello, conduit. It, it, it just gave me the message to pick something up. I know it did. No, maybe it was the closed door message. Come on, I know, I know I saw something to pick up a conduit. I could have sworn. All right, I guess I'm progressing with this very, very slow weapon, though, which is not my style at all. Uh, is this box something that's openable? No. I suppose I'll just have to be ready on the taser. Find valve and turn off steam. Well, I already had the axe, so what do I care? I thought I was going to have to go and chase you down. Thomas speaking. Document is a standard city-issued train schedule. Pressure has been applied from a stylus highlighting two scheduled routes, both originating from Central Metro Station. Route 16 to Burnside, departing 510, 7.30, 9.30 a.m. Route 66B leads to Briar. That's a tiny farm town an hour to the northwest. Departs 9.30 a.m. and midnight. This is his hub, so he goes to both locations regularly. I've also determined DNA from the sweat sample in the train matches DNA from the cigarette butt. 99.8% probability. The guy you're following is the guy who killed the two policemen. The matchmaker. At least, I think so. Something's still not adding up. Alright. Now, you would think that at that point we have enough evidence to clear myself and start working with the FBI again and... At least enough to get some backup. But I suppose not. Stomp. You're a little bit hardier. Oh, that was easy. What am I looking for exactly? It said I had to find a valve to shut off the steam. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to climb down. Climbing down, of course, always the best and most intelligent thing to do in horror games. But given the general public's aversion to doing so, it'll usually end up being something you have no choice in. 
I would love to see a horror game where you can actually get by on applying horror movie tropes and actually applying that knowledge and using that to survive. Okay, so that's... That's that done. Unfortunately, I'm going to be climbing up, leaving myself vulnerable to whatever's up there. I really hope they can't hit me when I'm at the top of the ladder. I hear them. There you are. Please run away. Yes, I actually really need you to run away right now. Now I could hear... I could hear the sound of wet footsteps on both directions. Yes, I knew it. I knew it. Uh, thank you for not taking any rebound shots. How much do you have in your gun? Eight bullets? Thank you very much, sir. And that means that I should be able to progress now. Also, that door looks like it has a knob on it. Just stuff another dead bird into my bag, which now contains more dead birds than forensic tools. And I can use this door to head upward. But it will always close behind me. So what's the point of this? Why even let me come back? I mean... I must have to at some point, right? If it's even giving me the option. But it also doesn't want me to leave the door open for some reason. Now if I head back down here, the, the steam should have stopped. Okay, we're moving forward. Moving forward is always a good thing. I have eight bullets, which is a fair amount. And I can probably save some ammo if it keeps sending these little scrawny guys at me. Because as we established, when they crawl at you, I can just stomp them to death in one hit. They have, like, no health. Something that's actually really nice and intuitive about the game design in this is that the beefier an enemy is, the more health they'll tend to have. So you can actually gauge a threat pretty much by going, oh wow, this guy's a lot bigger than me. This is where I came from. That was a lot of effort for nothing. Time to use my pathetic sprint. The only thing more pathetic than your sprint in this game is how slowly you make your way downstairs. And there's not even a sprint downstairs, because as I was holding the shift key as I was going down just now, and my sprint, my stamina bar was actually increasing. Which means that there was nothing I could do to make myself go faster there. Closed gate that isn't even giving me the option to open it, so I don't have to find some tool to get that open. Hello? Hey, come closer so I can tase and then kick you. Oh, it's Blind Corner Central. No wonder you like this place so much. Tase and kick. Oh, you didn't die from that kick. You're not dying at all. Okay, I should have just shot you because I lost a lot of health to that. I lost a lot of health to that. Maybe the, maybe the insta-death kick only works when you come crawling at me. I'll keep that in mind for the future. Do not underestimate the scrawny boys. Okay, so I already know that it's talking about a bird. There it is. Uh, because I've just noticed that he actually reacts verbally to that. He kind of makes a disgusted noise when he can smell a dead bird nearby. Now that one still appears to be either alive or at least twitching, so I don't know why it's giving off such a bad smell. Like the more rotted ones. I hear another one around that corner. Bang. Bang. You did, You even survived a gunshot. Headshot. Now, of course, headshots are ideal. But they're not quite easy to pull off in this game with no crosshair. Ow! I missed my opportunity to stomp you. 
but that one health kit was enough to restore us to full health, so... Let's check how much ammo we have left. Still three bullets. Which will save us quite a bit of headache in these circumstances. Climbing back on. I hear you. I hear somebody behind me. See, something that this game does really nicely is it takes advantage of the times when you know you're helpless. Alright, I have chosen to expend my last three bullets on you, sir. You just survived a headshot. What's happening? Am I dead? What just happened? What even happened just now? And he didn't even die? I'm so confused about what just happened. Okay, how much ammo do I have left? Okay, it starts me right back here. I gather that somebody came from behind, but I had full health. How much health was I losing with each hit? Bash. Come on, die, please. Just die. Just die, you had so much health. And there's nobody else to even be seen. Who got me before? I suppose we'll pick up the shovel. I imagine I'm going to have to use it at some point. I hear you scampering. Oh, it was another one of you. There was two big boys, and now I have no ammo. All right, well, you're not allowed to have this. Ugh. Why even disarm? Why even disarm if they can just do that... If they can just do that attack that's guaranteed to land and cost you some health? Why would I even bother to take a weapon away from you? Unless what I'm really meant to do is take the weapon and then back up. I haven't tried doing that yet. Now, I have to keep in mind I have the sledgehammer and there's a shovel on the ground behind me. So both of those weapons are available to us if we need them to open a door. In the meantime, there's nothing to do but climb this ladder. Alright, one health kit in there. We'll keep that in mind for later. A bird over here. And another shovel. Given the abundance of shovels it's throwing at me, I'm going to assume that's what I'm going to have to use for this segment. Anybody in my way? Now this looks like the staircase where I saw the... where I saw the dead bird earlier. So I can... ah! Oh my god! Oh! Oh! Oh my god! Oh, she is a magician. She's just playing the long game is all. Oh boy. Okay. I lost a little bit of health here. Luckily it has graciously provided me with some for right here. And there's that bird. Oh, that's nice. He's cheering me on. He raised his fists and shook them like it's a soccer game. You're having a little bit of trouble learning to crawl, and as we all know, you gotta learn to crawl before you can walk, and walk before you can run. It's good. It's good to see the Addict Petting Zoo is... undergoing programs to get people back on their feet. Hang on, guys. Um, Grandma's not so good on the stairs anymore. It takes me a little while to get down them. I'll kill you as soon as I'm ready. Now, these are corners that are a little bit tougher to see enemies around if they decide to hide. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of keeping my finger, my middle finger, on on the middle click button because that means that if somebody pops around a corner I'll be ready to quickly tase them which actually when you think about it that's kind of where's the fighting where is it where's the fighting happening it sounds like it's maybe happening directly above me or what's happening Whatever fight is going on, it's still going on. Uh, but it's kind of funny that middle click is the taser, which basically negates whatever they came at me to do. 
It's like I'm flipping them off and just completely stopping them from doing what they're trying to do. Sorry, I am getting a little bit... I'm getting a little bit sweaty and shaky right now, so I think I need to eat something. I'm just finding a good moment to do that. Alright, turn the steam valve. One of two steam valves opened, so I need to find another one. I'm just waiting for a good moment to go eat. A good moment to take a break and pause the recording. There you are. Taze! <laughs> this really is, the Taze really is just the middle finger button, isn't it? Literally pressed with the middle finger. Smack. So easy. It honestly is just like grabbing a shovel and stomping Cabbage Patch Kids in a field. Now that was the first one. Where else do I have to go? I can't imagine it would have this whole upper area unless I was meant to do something up here, right? Ah, there's the other valve. I can't believe I didn't notice that. My mind is not right. I'm focused entirely right now on I, I really, really feel like I need to eat something. It's strange. It's not even hunger. It's just, I think they call this hypoglycemia, but I haven't actually been diagnosed. I only have Google, so I don't know if that's actually what's happening right now. Okay, we got a couple of pieces of health right here. I'll break the glass so that I can grab them quickly in a pinch. But I don't actually need health right now. Actually, I'm not even going to get to grab them because... I'm not even going to get to grab them because we're moving on from this part. And, you know, I think now is as good a time as any uh, to take a little break and eat something. Now is a pretty good transitional point. And we're back. All right, so I've only been gone about 10, 15 minutes, but I already have to kind of shift gears back into playing again. Where are we going? Oh, there's a checkpoint right there. That appears to be a corpse, or maybe multiple corpses. With a shot? That's not multiple corpses. That's a swarm of rats just standing there staring at me. Ugh. At first I almost thought they were maybe glitching out, but they actually were just waiting for me to get close. Oh, that was creepy. They weren't even eating the body. They were just all swarmed around it, staring at me as I approached. That was very unnerving. Okay, well, I'd much rather have a shotgun. Especially against someone like you. Death. Die. Come on, where? No. Die. I'm gonna need you all to die right now. Grab that 45. No, pick it up. Don't have a ton of time. Alright, hopefully I turned the odds against him over there. What else is there for me to do? Come on, hit him, hit him, hit him! Nice. Just get that damage on him so I don't have to. And he goes down with the taser. See, in, an, in areas with a lot of enemies, the best thing you can really do is kind of try to set them against each other. I think we're clear now. See, I kind of lost track. I think we're clear, but there is also the chance that we're... that there might have been one other guy that went down by the subway cars. I'm a little concerned about that, but I probably would have seen him by now. I'm sure it's fine. Damage received. Looks like a blueprint for a Holman number 8 subway passenger car. Searching local business registry shows Holman was the city's contractor for the cars years ago. Yeah, I haven't seen one of these number 8 cars in years. Get a close-up of the red circled area. It's hard to see. Hmm. 
the circled part, red ballpoint pen, highlights a ceiling compartment in the car. Now, during these segments Thomas where I'm on the phone, the shut when they go out of commission. I can only move to a certain basket. edge of this area. I will grab this conduit, because I do believe it's a better weapon than the 2x4 for my type of fighting. It might just be a better weapon overall. What is that noise? Uh, see, I think we're missing sound files again. I think there was supposed to be... I do think there was supposed to be something else going on there. Okay, what am I looking for? There we go. Dust on the end of the crowbar is a common plaster mix. Pigmentation particles mixed in with the dust are of a soft pinkish hue. Department store dummies? You got it. And now I'll be using it for myself, because I cannot get enough crowbar. Now it just gave me a checkpoint, which indicates to me that perhaps some new friends have joined us. Yep! Alright, now let's do what we just did, but again, okay? No, you have to come this way. Thank you. There we go. What did I have to do? I have to get onto one of these subway cars, right? Question is, how am I going to do that? I remember getting stuck on this part years ago, but I don't remember how I actually resolved it. Ah, probably like... There's somebody else here. Somebody's here. So I'm climbing out on this beam, because in order for them to come at me, they're going to have to run this way. Where are you, bud? If there really isn't anyone here, then that's actually kind of genius. Because that would mean that the developers had the foresight. See, I think a big thing in horror is you have to be able to predict what the player is going to be thinking at any given moment. Because if you know what the player is going to be thinking, then you can exploit what they're thinking. You can exploit their feelings relating to a situation. Basically, whatever the thing they most don't want to happen, that's what you make happen. In this case, they might have exploited my fear of somebody coming up behind me by playing the sounds of somebody running around here without actually spawning anyone. Compiling data into three-dimensional model. Big boy footprint, size 14D. Sole pattern matches Badger's footwear protector pattern. I'll run a buyer search locally, but you can get these anywhere. Fairly common. There's some schmutz in the pattern troughs. Probably same plaster dust as before. Yeah, I think we're definitely missing some game sounds here. Open ceiling compartment in subway car and look for clues. I found some clues! What is it that I'm actually looking for, though? Now it's just not letting me pull the thing out. Ah, right there. Bart's department store? Just a minute. 645 Burnside. Went out of business 14 years ago. The squatters group took it over almost immediately, and 
Now it's not what you would call prime shopping territory. Makes sense the matchmaker would be there, a good source of mannequin parts. But then what's all this here? An outpost? A, a second shop? <sighs> I should probably go down there. Yeah, just don't get carried away. Shit, the cops don't even drive down Burnside unless they have to. It's a nasty area filled with nasty people. And the people down there are different. They go beyond nasty. Stand clear of platform. Stand clear of platform. Metro Station Daily Rods are now beginning for Tuesday. Route 6 to 12th Avenue. Route 9 to New Montgomery. Route 16 to Burnside. Arriving platform 16. Do not hold train doors. Thomas, Route 16 to Burnside. That train will take you directly to the department store. If I hurry, I'll just make it. Okay. Now there's something... Hello? Pays and a smack. I hear you out there. There's something really weird about hearing that announcement down here in this sealed off area with abandoned train cars. We know how deep we are, we know we're probably deeper than the regular metro, but we can still hear that announcement nonetheless. Even after being retired from service, even after being sealed away in the sarcophagus of a room, these train cars still hear those messages. Even if there's no one actually around to hear them but the train cars. Hey. Yeah, you climb out of here. we go. Hi. You, you really did not take advantage of your head start the way you should have. Maybe I'll have a little bit more luck if I back up and then block. Maybe that's a thing, like, maybe... Maybe that maybe swing attacks actually do... Maybe they do actually move in an arc. It's hard to think with all these noises going on. Alright, well, I'm not climbing up into that. In fact, I'd actually rather you guys fight it out amongst yourselves for as long as possible. Well, there's a shotgun. I can even the odds with this. But I don't want to leave behind my crowbar. Anybody under here? No, but here's a piece of metal. First one I found. Something tells me I'm not going to be collecting all of them for this run. We've got to be nearing the end, right? Okay, now the fighting seems to have subsided by now. But there's got to be a winner, right? Hello. Are we going to be cool? Because I can be cool if you can be cool. No, you screwed it up. I told you. You could have lived. I was willing to let you live. Alright, now... Presumably, presumably what I need to do is find some way to shut off that steam, right? I mean, that was the answer last time. But no, maybe I just have to head up. Maybe I don't actually have to care what's down that way. Maybe I'm just trying to get out of here and back to the platform. Ah, which is probably why I'm able to open this, is because I have to come back this way. There we go. All right, moving on. And I believe, you know what? Next up is probably the infamous Bart's Department Store. Now, even people who haven't played this game know what that is, but if you haven't, well, you will. It's been determined that birds are drawn to specific locales throughout the city by strange sonic disturbances of unknown origin. Once in close proximity of a disturbance, 
The bird's brain suffers immediate and extensive brain damage that quickly leads to death. It's not known at this time whether humans and other life forms are affected, although there's clearly a connection between crime-ridden areas and those where birds swarm and die. Yeah. Thomas, it's Farrell. Running from the Bureau will do no good. You know we'll find you eventually. Look, I understand. The case load became too much. You weren't solving cases like you used to. You're talented, high strung. You snapped. It happens sometimes. Come Look, I did not snap. Someone else killed those policemen. I it looks like it might have been the matchmaker. With your gun. That seems unlikely, doesn't it? have psychiatric staff that can help you sort things out. With all due respect, I don't need a shrink. You sure about that? Right okay. into it. Feral. This isn't Feral. It's Malcolm Van Horn. Has your boss been bothering you? Yes. To be expected. They're not going to let this drop. You must continue with your investigation. Do you understand? <laughs> Do you understand? Yes. I mean, no. What do you want from me, Malcolm? What's going on? Going on? You're being investigated by the FBI for the murder of two police officers. That's what's going on. You will be tested, Thomas. Of that you can be sure. I must go. And now here... Here is where we start getting into what this game is really known for. These creepy, dingy environments that... Are, they, are like these twisted reflections of everyday places. And as usual, we are not alone. Now a lot of you probably already know some of what goes on in this place. But for those that don't, I mean, I'm not going to spoil what goes on here, but basically this is one of the most infamous levels, not just in this game, but of any horror game. When people talk about this game, you can bet they're going to be talking about this level. You are really lucky that this landed exactly the way you wanted it to. Yeah. Where do I go, though? Uh, that was weird. I know they were running around upstairs, but it was kind of... The sound... There's somebody here. I'm gonna ignore you if I can all help, at all help it. And now you can see where some of the paranoia comes from. Some of the enemies in this level have actually taken to wearing the shells of the department store mannequins. And what that means is that any one of these can be an enemy. Mutual hit. Good show. Uh, he hit me so hard I accidentally lowered the DPI on my mouse. Uh, let me take a second to get that sorted out again. All right, now where are we going? Probably through that window, but as usual, I'm still gonna take my time and look around because you never know where it's gonna stuff some collectibles. I think all they really do is like unlock concept art and stuff, but I'm not sure if they do anything beyond that. Now, see, the thing here is we don't even have the benefit of being able to clear stuff out. No. 
nice delay on that shot. Another thing that I suppose might be tied to frame rate. But I don't really want to go out there with a shotgun enemy roaming around. Not without a gun myself, or at least it, what, so I can ambush him in such a way that I can get my taser on him before he gets a shot off. Hi. You're all the way over there, I'm not really too worried about you. Now, is a 2x4 actually better than what I'm currently do holding? It's not as good in terms of block, and that's kind of the thing that I'm focusing on this time around, because my biggest weakness is not being able to block effectively. Listen to that. If you listen very closely, you can hear the low sound of the music playing over the speakers. You can see the fallen ornaments and decorations. This place closed during Christmas time. Okay, so just saying, with the way this is set up, there is statistically no way that all of these mannequins are mannequins. For example... Yeah, okay, so I think the way that you can tell is the actual mannequins have a platform under them. But that may not be true in every case. For example... Just being a little bit unique does not mean that they're not going to be an enemy. So that one has a little bit of a Santa mask. Okay. Come on. Santa has to die now. And something that's kind of cool about these enemies is that parts of the, parts of the mask will actually fall away as you hit them. So that guy started out as Santa... In the end, it is, well, Santa, but zombie Santa. I hear a lot of walking around me. I don't think this is the only enemy at play right now. Yep, there you are. I'm going to back up and ready my taser. There we go. You just got to be slow and smart. got to be slow and smart. It's all about the timing in this game. Now, I don't think I can hop these railings and head downstairs right now. And there's a wall down there anyway. There is a shotgun right here. Uh, but only two shells. It's a different kind of shotgun, though, so hopefully it does a little bit more damage than the previous ones that I've had. Uh, and we're making up for the lack of bathroom stalls by having these change rooms. This one has three rounds. I think I'd rather have the shotgun and do more damage. Because two versus... That voice sounded... eerily childlike. And this one is in the rubble, so I can't really tell. Uh, but I can grab the arm off, so I was going to say I can't really tell if that's a guy or not. But there's a handprint. Get it. What, what does that mean? I'm not sure. I'm just saying that the print from the tape recorder wasn't made by the same hand. <sighs> okay, it seems like our sound is back. Now, that's the interesting thing about the forensic investigation stuff, is that it kind of allows you... It's a nice way to experience all the twists and turns of the story, 
without actually having to have the characters present for it for some kind of token confrontations. Blood droplet size and dispersal pattern indicate victims I see you. I see you. Height of blood on the wall indicates it's possibly a head wound. See, that's the thing. This game knows that during these phone call segments, you can't turn it off. They know that you have no weapons available, you are vulnerable during the phone call segments. And the game exploits that. It was sawed off, and it's the same thing. It goes back to what I said earlier about knowing what the player is going to be thinking, and choosing to exploit those fears and anxieties. Uh, I'm willing to let bygones be bygones. Okay, you can go. Nope! You screwed it up. They all screw it up. You're screwing around. Which of you? Come on, which of you? I can't believe it. A room with five mannequins and not one of them is an enemy. Now that is truly something weird. Detection tool. Now with stuff like this, I can have my detection tool put away manually. Which means, and this is more genius game design, that means it's actually possible for me to get so focused on doing something like following this trail that I don't notice that I've walked right up to an enemy. I'm going to proceed with caution. Hi. <laughs> How'd that plan work out for you? Now, what else is around? I hear them. I hear them on my right. They're over here somewhere. Now, you both look like mannequins. I can see the base on both of you. Uh, but there certainly are a lot of blind corners for them to hide behind. Something I like about these guys is that they don't always wait for you to get close. They don't always hide behind corners. Sometimes you look over and you can just see them walking in the distance, shuffling around at the edge of your light. Just imagine this place before we got here. Just this dark, abandoned old store, that music playing through the empty corridors and... decorations all fallen all over the place. And these twisted figures just shuffling around in the dark. Anyone here? I see. There she is. Is that the girl from before? I never noticed that before, but you can see her across the way. I wonder if that's supposed to be the same one. I wonder if she still shows up if you kill her earlier. This leads to the elevator shaft. Find route to ground floor and continue search. Now look at that. I'm going to turn my flashlight off for a second. It's the way that moonlight just casts itself down through the through the skylight. The level's all decked out in Christmas decorations while the music plays. Just knowing that the space exists is eerie enough. Even without the dangers that are around here. Even without the mannequins. Just knowing that... See, this is something I think about a lot. So, there are some abandoned places that are local to me that I've explored a bunch of times. And sometimes I'll just be sitting around at night, and I'll just be thinking, those places that I've walked through... Right now, those places are still there, even as I'm not experiencing them just sitting there and it's quiet. I wonder at night what they look like right now. That's kind of the vibe. That's kind of what this is making me think of. All right, where do I go? I'm not quite sure where it wants me to go. I can grab a, this sledgehammer. Oh, 
what happened. What happened? Was this open earlier? Was that display the thing that broke? Nope! I knew it. I knew it! Ugh. I'm not going to be able to block with this thing. There's just not enough time. It's too slow. Give me that. No, I actually needed the sledgehammer to open that lock. I remember now. Where was it? Haze. And smack. I think hitting them in the head actually does do more damage, but there's more. I know there's more. I know there's more of you. There's gotta be. I heard it. I heard more of you. Can I at least go back and grab some more health? Is there anything back here that I can use? See, now I don't remember. Oh, right, no, I did kill you. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot about that. I actually did kill you, so it was a different one that I saw across the way. Unless she became a ghost that is now going to haunt this place, in which case, I guess not much has really happened for her. Not much of a change in lifestyle. Oh, and of course there was another... Of course there was another one right here. I didn't even have to go back all that way. Ow, what, what's... I think somebody has a gun. Okay, okay, just run out of ammo for me, please. Actually, I don't know if you even can run out of ammo. Two bullets left. Okay, so... You had a gun. I had a sledgehammer. And your plan was to rush me. Why? What advantage did that offer you exactly? Your head was on backwards. Ah, uh, I'm glad you're not a thing in the world anymore. There she is again. Stop that. Give me that. Thank you. And three shells left, too. Nice. Okay, so what else am I looking for? I probably have to investigate the bottom of the shaft, right? Which, uh... Is there anybody else around that I should know about? Well, there's you up there. I'm fine if you're just gonna watch, but... I'd really appreciate it if you'd stay up there, and I can't help but notice you walked off. So I have a feeling you're gonna be a problem in the very near future. Where does this trail go? Curbs to the left. Comes up here. It goes through here. I'm going to have to find another way around. Which, sadly, I have a feeling is going to take me back past that other guy. And how many shells do I have left? Three. Okay, going to want to definitely keep the amount of ammo I have in mind. So that I always know, like, okay, on my next shot, I'm going to have to be ready to make the shot. And then grab a melee weapon while they're staggered. Okay, I'm gonna run over, get this guy. Die. Die, please. And now, she's all that's left. And now I'm actually gonna need some more health. Thankfully, there's a kit right there. 45 cal. There was a gun just on display in a department store? Even in America, I don't think that's a thing. And then again, maybe I'm being a little bit optimistic. I am in New York, specifically Long Island, so you don't really see guns just everywhere. But I understand in, in a lot of places in the country you do. He has a shotgun. 
I have... Oh, this is actually a full magazine. I have nine bullets, so... Definitely willing to make liberal use of my ammo just to get him early so that he doesn't get a shot off. I have health kits here, so I have everything I need to deal with this guy. Come on. Well, that didn't go the way you intended, did it? Alright. Where is she? That, that uh... That spooky, stringy-haired girl is nowhere to be seen. <laughs> I knew it was coming and it still got me. Move, move, move. Move, I feel like I'm moving even slower than usual. What is happening here? Now, that's not just a mannequin. I think there's actually a body in there. I can definitely see some pink under that chin. That looks like a guy that fell, like, several stories. And then we just move on. That part with the mannequins is really... I mean, it's a large Marge scare. It just happens, you're forced to accept it and just move on without any closure as to what was happening here. And I think that's part of the reason why... I think that's part of the reason why this level is so infamous. It's because you're forced to just accept it. You don't get any closure on what it was about. It just happens. This is a bit of a winding labyrinth, isn't it? Hi. Now that's a little bit of an ingenious scare. You're walking up here, and you're expecting there to be somebody crawling out from under that little hobo tent, and she's around the corner ready to jump scare you. Okay, it's giving me a lot of opportunities to heal myself. And there's at least two fire axable doors down here. This just loops back around to the same place. This whole basement is just so needlessly complicated. But I can't really claim that it's unrealistic. I have explored a couple of basements that were a little bit like this. Okay, so if I move over here, I can't have the investigation tool out. I have to come back this way. And these drag marks... Now well, they come to here. And then they just stop? Maybe it's because the ground is wet? Oh, there's so many blind corners. But I haven't heard anyone so far. So far, for the sake of progression, I haven't been taking blind corners as slowly as I normally do. I've just kind of been waiting to hear the voices and the shuffling around. So we have like four fire axable doors that we can knock down. Yeah, there's at least four of them. Five now. So there's going to be a lot of backtracking that I'm going to have to do. Okay, what am I looking for then? Oh, I see. I'm supposed to use the collection tool here. Okay. No, zoom in more? There we go. following the trail. It may lead to answers. Maybe even a body. 
I would if I could, but this part of the department store is flooded. His trail ends here. It might be a long shot, but try using your gas spectrometer. Dead bodies start decaying immediately, producing hydrogen sulfide and traces of methane. I'm getting a lot of on-the-job training. You should be able to sniff it out. I feel like this is all stuff I should know. Hi. Nope, I totally just saw you spawn in. I knew something was going to come through there because, I mean, look at how it's framed in that light. It was absolutely ripe for a scare. Luckily, um, luckily I happen to be armed at the moment. Otherwise, I'd have had to fight him, and he's a bit of a beefy one. What you just did was not normal. You weren't just carrying out your typical everyday activities. That... That's not a thing people can do. Are you gonna get up? Yep. Hang on, I'm trying to kick you to death. Thank you. Ah, oh, the stun lock. The old classic. Stop, 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 stop! Oh my god, oh, that was... That was just a very... That was just, in a very primal way, just panic-inducing. Oh, Lord. Oh, jeez. Okay. I still have one bullet left. Okay, so I'm going to look for someone to put that into before I progress. No, I think that's all for now. So I'm going to use this here fire axe. And hopefully now we can get a move on. Ha uh, boop. Ha uh, boop. And oh, we're back here. Well, at least I don't have to run all the way back, but don't think I can't cure you. It's definitely very, very important to listen out. Sound is a big part of keeping yourself safe in this game. And I think the other. Where was that other fire axable door? I could have sworn there was another one down this way. And this is where I came in. And what did it tell me? It told me to use... There's somebody afoot. Ah, oh, the fog in this room isn't helping me. Okay, you're going that way. Where'd she go? There should be somebody here. There she is. Okay. Come on. Taze. And smack. Yep, the Bioshock advice holds true in every game. Zap them and whack them. Now let's get up here and start knocking down some of these doors, see what they're hiding from us. Stairs going up, and a checkpoint, so presumably that's the way I have to go. So what's the way I don't have to go? Let's get out that spectrometer. No, it's actually... I don't think this is entirely optional. Maybe that other doorway is just the way that I have to leave. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Alright, more health. This game is being very, very generous with the health. I'll give it that. Anything else in here I should know about? No? What about up here? Now, this is a very strange structure. It's like a loading dock, but indoors? That's kind of weird. I guess it's you bring the forklift up to it. And this just comes out on the other side. Right here, yeah, so it's just a shortcut. Now let's get over here, and come on, I can't jump down? 
Let's pull that mannequin arm out from under that door and see what happens. No, I can't. Nothing to be done here. Now, where is this thing leading me, then? I came in from there. I come up through here. No, I must have come in from here. Yes, okay, I came in from here. That door is held open by a mannequin arm. And here was where we found the bird, so I can only come up here. So what am I supposed to be on the lookout for, then? It says use the gas spectrometer. Do I really just have to go up that staircase? I mean, that seemed like quite, a, quite an extensive area to just only be for the bird. Uh, but the spectrometer is spilling up as I take these stairs. I think this is the way I'm supposed to go. That's a bit odd. There was kind of a lot to that previous area just to give me just to give me a bird. This can be nothing but great. All right. It's like the bathroom stall idea taken to its worst possible conclusion. I was expecting so much so much I got jump scared by the switch to whatever this is. I hesitate to call them flashbacks. They're more like visions. Search the dressing rooms. The body is in this area somewhere. Do you think? I think we found it, but I'll open them all up just to be sure. about out here. Well, not normal. Thomas, photograph the victim's face. These investigation segments are so nerve-wracking because you can't pull out a weapon to defend yourself. I don't think enemies can get you while you're here, but I don't want to test that theory. guy's the matchmaker. Well, he certainly didn't kill himself and set it up this way. See what else you can find. Getting into some real intrigue here. you, but it once again seems like I'm maybe missing some sounds. So this guy was just in here without backup? That doesn't seem very wise. Also, a lot of these killings that I've committed probably qualify as murder, so even if I'm not guilty of killing the cops, I am guilty of killing these guys. I'm gonna get out of here. Let me just skedaddle. Oh, looks like the police lost that fight. If nothing else, I'm at least getting a lot of people killed in pursuit of me. So it seems like in combat, avoidance is just as acceptable as actual combat. There's a shotgun, but... I think the level is about to end. I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to make use of that. But where am I going? I think I've got 
about something, Thomas. The newspaper clippings you found in the room at the metro station, each of the articles talks about a serial killer, a serial killer that was on your case list. Nine names were mentioned. Of those, seven of the nine were crossed out in each of the clippings by a black felt tip marker. The only names that weren't crossed out were the matchmaker and the torturer. Of the names that were crossed out, all those cases have gone cold. And now you can cross off the matchmaker. Wait, are you implying that there's someone stalking serial killers? So what, he goes around killing killers and then he marks off their name in his little personal diary? It sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? It does, but it adds up. It almost makes sense. Hold on. Uh-oh. Ah, shit. Rosa, I have to call you back. Yes, the situation suddenly got worse, even though you could see... Even though you could see the flashing lights out there this entire time. Yes, that is what has caused this to go bad. Oh, wait. Let me just grab the much better shotgun. Oh, not much better. It only has one shell. Thank you for standing still. Thankfully, unfortunately, it didn't do anything. What's happening right now? There's kind of a lot of ridiculous stuff going on. Nope. No escape for you. Smack. Come on. Smack. It's not really letting me move forward. Okay, kind of a little bit of an overload here. I'm not really sure what's going on. There's a lot happening. Okay, are we done? Thank you, finally. And I fell through the floor. How funny would that be if I fell down on top of that mannequin? The one that was, like, all tangled up in the wires? Huh. <sighs> but that was that. Summary. It has been discovered that humans are being affected in the same way birds are, providing an explanation for the unusual rise in severe brain disorders reported by local hospitals. Those inherently predisposed to violent tendencies slip rapidly towards a host of mental psychoses and begin to exhibit signs of hallucinations, homicidal behavior, and paranoia. Yeah. You were going to call me back. Sorry. So, the fingerprint in the metro station and the boot print are not the matchmakers, but this other guy. So, is he the torturer? Doubtful. It's not the torturer's M.O. Think about it. The final murder in each of those cases on your list ended with a killing similar to the previous ones. This guy goes around and kills the killers in the same way that they're killing the innocent. He's like an Uber killer, a serial killer X, a perp not on your original case list. So this serial killer X kills serial killers. He takes them down using their own methods. If the torturer is still at large, what's his MO? Pretty sick stuff. He likes to abduct people, torture them for fun, then let them loose and hunt them down. His goal is to drive them to suicide so he doesn't actually deliver the final blow. What is this city coming to? All right, so I've got to find the torturer and save his ass so the new killer doesn't kill him? Life of an agent. Yeah, well, I'm no longer an agent, apparently. Sorry. Look, I can't get you the bureau dossier on the torturer now, as you can imagine. But we can find out some public information. And I have something else you need to see. Okay. Well, it's too dangerous for me to come to the Bureau. Can you meet me at the City Library? You know there's been a fire there. The whole thing's shut down for repairs. Exactly. There's damage, but there's got to be a terminal or two still working. And no one will know. Uh, can you meet me there in uh, 15 minutes? I'll be there. Yes, the City only has one library. And it's also... Inconveniently, the only place we can access a computer. And there's two dead birds right off the bat right there. Which kind of defeats the purpose of collectibles. But in keeping with the theme of everything being a weapon, we can just grab this locker door right off the, right off the unit and use it as a weapon. At least for now. 
You are not allowed to pick up a weapon, only me. Ah, uh, see, they're they're almost more dangerous. They're almost more dangerous when they have no weapon because then they can do that stupid attack. Thank you. I feel like it almost makes fun of me in a few ways. Like, is there a piece of metal here? Yeah, it's really laying the collectibles on thick. Anyway, like I said, it, I feel like it almost makes fun of me here because it seems to put all these uh, put all these health packs in places where I'm the least likely to need them. I would actually really like that weapon of yours. Thank you. Come on! That is so stupid. It's such a stupid attack. What's even the point of taking their weapons away? <sighs> what else do we have to do? Somebody's gonna break through this wall. I'm not gonna tase you right away. Because if I tase you right away, then it's not gonna work because you're still in the middle of your animation. Any ammo in this gun? All five shells, so we're good on that. That means the cops. You need to get the hell out of there. Oh, I kind of remember this level, yeah. So in this one, this is kind of a transitional part. From what I remember, it's not a particularly long level. But it is very run and gun. Now, can I just shoot a cop right here? Can I become actually guilty? Maybe if I'm fast, but I would imagine it's scripted so that he can't die to me. Yeah, what do you think was gonna happen? Oh, that helicopter is so loud. It's loud like some kind of helicopter. I can't help but notice that one. What are you wearing? What, what does it say on your jacket? I thought it's- I thought for a second that it said FBI on this jacket. Oh, you're so loud! Oh no. Oh no, we're actually doing bum fights. Oh, there's too many. There's way too many. Come on, give me your- give me your weapon. I need your weapon. Uh, rebar. How'd that work out for you? That was kind of funny. I turn around and he just has that locker raised over my head. Ow! There's not a ton I can do about you, bud. I'm not even going to have time to grab that hell. I'm still going to try, though. Oh, it's so loud and there's so much happening. This is so... Uh, it is so hard to commentate and even focus on what I'm supposed to be doing. And I didn't even have to run back for that health because there's a bunch right here. Jump down. Huh. And the adventure continues. I just can't focus when all this stuff is happening. And that was our surprisingly unexcited. That was our surprisingly unexciting scripted moment for the game. Shit. What the hell was that? Thomas, I'm at the library. Where are you? Rosa, be quiet. You know, you could just hang up. You can't see this door partially ajar. You're the worst hey, cop. Smithy. Johnson, wait up. You are the worst cop on the entire Most planet, but then again, I suppose that tracks with what we've seen so far. These guys are so incompetent. They're Sorry. actually oh, doing, God. like, a whole manhunt for me. When you must say there is at least serious doubt that I'm the one that killed those guys. If you're being even a little bit reasonable. Summary. Confidential statistics show a significant increase in crime rates involving law enforcement officials. Petty crime among officers is up 64%, while domestic violence is up 114%.
Although the full report has not yet been delivered, the increase appears to be linked to officers fighting in areas dealing with the city's recent crime wave. I don't know what that was, but I must say I don't remember this at all. Okay, but we're in the library now. And, oh, find Rosa. I have to actually meet her in person. Uh, to be honest, I haven't really been paying much attention during the cutscenes since I have played this game before. And I'm kind of using those moments to just kind of sit back in my chair and take a breather. It's another dead bird. Okay, so there's a health kit on the table right there. We'll keep that in mind. This kind of actually feels like it'll function as like a hub area. But maybe that's not the case. Okay, so sub-objective for right now. Find ourselves a crowbar. Just that tense, silent moment, waiting for the elevator. It's strange, this place... Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me and my childhood, but, uh... This feels really comfortable to me. I really like this location. And I know it's gonna get scarier, but... I don't know, this is... To me, this is the cozy kind of empty. Uh, do I have to call the elevator again? It should already be here. Those doors should just open up. Unless there's somebody at the top pushing that button. And brought the elevator back to them while I was waiting here. Oh, we're going down to the basement. All this elevator does is go between the ground floor and the basement. It's Dracula. I made a joke right there, but uh, in Bram Stoker's Dracula, the 1992 one, there actually is a really cool effect where they're approaching Dracula and he hides in the dark, but they can see his eyes glowing and they approach him with a lantern. And as they approach with the lantern, they reveal that those eyes are just kind of floating amidst a tower of rats. There's a lot to make fun of in that movie, but there's also a lot of things that I think are really cool about it. Actually, uh, I posted a review on this channel about a year ago. Alright, what am I looking for? I have to keep reminding myself to keep the commentary going, because a lot of the time I'm just tensely looking around corners. But I'll tell you what, I had such a nostalgia attack on seeing this thing. This object is just such an icon of my childhood. I don't even know how long it's been since I've actually been in a library. Because, I mean, let's be real, I tend to just download everything. And when I want an actual physical book... Oh, hey, Rosa! When this I want an actual physical book, I tend to buy it online. Squatters and addicts have moved in, and they don't like company. Come this way. I have something to show you. I used my security clearance to do a little checking up on you. I found this folder in your supplemental personnel file. During your last physical, they found several abnormalities. For starters, your bone and muscle densities are off the chart. You have a reputation for being tough, but who knew? You also have a hyperactive serotonergic system in the brain. What that means, I have no idea. And lastly, there's a chest x-ray that's been redacted. Redacted? Yeah, right where your esophagus and larynx are. Someone's blacked out the x-ray and added the notation, C subjects PR-56. A PR-56 is a special addendum to a personnel record. 
and yours is classified black. That's pretty top-level security, way beyond either you or me. Our government is awfully interested in you. I didn't know. Well, now you do. Maybe I shouldn't have told you, but there it is. Oh, and I also left something there on the counter for you. Popular modification to the standard taser. That doesn't look like a taser. That looks like some kind of... Well, to be honest, that looks like something Dr. Kleiner would come up with. Your taser has been upgraded. Okay, but what did... Upgraded how? Does it just do more damage? Or maybe does it stun them for longer? That was a bit weird. Jeez, Thomas, you okay? You looked like you were about to faint there. Come on, let's get this over with. Scavengers looking for parts to sell. I have to say, I appreciate that scare destroyed. because it's just... You have to find a terminal that isn't damaged. Her bending back like that, it's just you know, an unexpected Lolo. image. It's Looks just like something so you don't expect to see. In the lock. You search this office. I'll take that one over there. Look for a computer that's in working order. And it didn't feel the need to rely on playing a scare chord. Paper cutter, better in every way. Oh, well, I guess it's better than in every way than nothing. Which doesn't make much difference to me. Ah! Oh, I didn't, I really did not expect enemies now. Oh. Oh, okay, so you're gonna give me fake enemies, but they're taking my real health. Real nice game. Uh, can I find a health kit so that... I told you we weren't alone. Come on, I found a working computer. But by all accounts, we are. Those were hallucination. Wait. Oh, grab desk drawer. I can actually pull out the desk drawer and use it as a weapon. Oh, that's kind of neat. You really can pick up just about anything, it's huh? It's a search engine specific to the library. Just type in the torturer's name, and we should get the latest info from the local news, including broadcast feeds. You mean his title, right? I feel like if we had his name, we wouldn't really need much of an investigation. Can anything else go wrong? We'll have to find the server room and get the network back. Now that, that is unnerving. That is super creepy. How she just disappears in mid-sentence. Like you're, you're focused on doing this and you look up and she's just gone. Mid-sentence. In fact, it's her sentence cutting off that causes you to look up in the first place. That is excellent. I'm really loving the downplayed scares relating to her so far. And I'm really not a tremendous fan of these, of these visions. I feel like those are just kind of enforcing, like, you find this scary. Rosa, Rosa, are you there? Rosa's been abducted, find her. How did he manage that? Okay, well, I guess we'll get to work with my expanded taser that I'm not sure exactly how it's better. Can't open any of these doors. All right, through the double doors it is. Also, this place is quite winding for a library. Although, again, I suppose it's not totally unheard of for a place like this to have weird architecture, especially an older building. Crowbar required. So once again, we got to find that crowbar. All roads lead to crowbar. Detection tool. What am I looking for here? Over here is, I guess, right on the edge of where I would be looking around, but... Oh, right here. I don't know what the point of doing this is, though. Considering Rosa can't exactly look at it while she's been taken. This is Rosa. 
I'm out of the lab at present, but we'll return shortly. In an emergency, please use my authorized bureau cell number. Physical evidence received and stored. So that's her phone right there. Hey, no, come back, I need that. Thank you for dying. Now where's that other guy? I need that axe. Now get back here. Uh, apparently you running is scripted as well because you're not affected by it. Normally shooting enemies on the run works. Normally in my duties as a federal agent, it's perfectly normal to tase someone in the back as they run. Uh, but I don't really feel like I have much of a choice in terms of catching that guy. No, what I'm mainly looking for right now is help. I can't really afford to get into an engagement with more than one guy. Because I'm pretty much certain to lose health basically every time I get into a fight. It's always the- ow! It's always the time when I most need the help, but it's not gonna give it to me. I see some on the wall right there, but I don't have time to screw around. I gotta take all of it. Alright, that's two out of four. Still two left. Seven bullets. It's time to hunt down that axe, man. Where'd you go? I guess I'm still used to Lost in Vivo because my first instinct when looking ahead was to whistle as if he's gonna yelp like my dog. I just straight up murdered a man for the object he was holding. Come on! I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time. Now I'd like to test this taser and find out what exactly is different about it. Maybe it just charges more quickly, but I don't know. Only one shell left. Not really worth putting a... Putting a weapon down for. I don't know what you want me to do. The combat is just so clunky, especially when all it's giving me is firearms. I feel like it's kind of- I have to come all the way back here? You've got to be kidding. I feel like it's kind of only giving me guns, and that's a huge problem because once you run out, you're out. And they're not even really doing that much more damage than the regular guns anymore. All right, now we know we can't tase you. I know I can't tase you because your running is scripted. You know what? I think this taser causes them to go all the way down. Instead of just stunning them in place, it makes them fall. I think that's what it's really doing. And then I can kind of get the one-hit kill on them while they're on the ground. Alright. Yes, that's the advantage here. So that is quite a bit more useful. Now the question is, does that still work on the big boys? Is it actually any more effective at all on them? There you are. I shouldn't even be wasting ammo on these guys. I should be saving my ammo for the gun boys. Yes, that's saving me quite a bit of ammo. Now, I need that axe. But before I take that up... I think he might be the guy that killed me before, so I think I may not actually be in need of the ammo, but I just hate to leave all this ammo sitting on the floor. And the gun plus taser has actually become quite a powerful combination now with that upgrade. Because of all the health damage that it does. Now, I don't imagine it's gonna want me to call this elevator. No, I just gotta get back there and knock that door down. Now, you, you have a gun. 
it sure is doing a whole lot of damage to me with these guys. See, the thing is, unless they come around a corner, they're pretty much guaranteed to do a lot of damage on me. They're pretty much going to get at least one shot off. I don't know how much I can really do about that unless I happen to have the taser ready. But so far, it's always been sending them at me with another guy. Let's break this door down and get into that. And it looks like a server room. Now, I'm always paranoid, actually, about these moments where pulling out the detection tool is optional. Because I can be attacked in those moments. Yeah, you don't need shortly. to give me the whole call every single time. My authorized bureau cell number. Physical evidence received and stored. Okay, now I need that crowbar so that I can open several of the doors that we've seen. Upstairs, rare books cage. There's terminal activity in rare books. It may be Rosa. Now it may just be the toll on my own sanity that's causing me to believe she was abducted in the first place. Well, actually, that's not entirely true because, I mean, we did find her phone on the ground. Then again, maybe that's a hallucination as well. I think I can use the crowbar to open that, but let's see if that... No, her phone isn't here anymore. Maybe that was... Maybe that was just a hallucination. I think that's the door that we saw it through. Those guys are all armed. That's a machine gun! I don't remember that being in the game. Oh, they're taking the elevator up. What are those guys up to? What could they possibly want with this place? I'm just gonna... Call elevator. No, thank you. I'm gonna make a note of those health kits that are right there. And we'll do just a little bit of a quick look down this way. There must be some reason you can come here. There's that FBI document. There must be some reason I can come this way. Oh, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Alright. But I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to figure it out. Let's just call that elevator and be ready to tase. Anticipation level's rising. Oop. Nobody. Just the way I like it. Alright, back up to ground floor. Shut up, phone. Ah, oh, we're back to where we entered. No, 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 no. They're all together. They're not fighting each other. Oh, never mind. Oh, nope, they're shooting at me. Give me your gun. I'd very much like any one of your guns. Just so long as I can get it. Taser definitely coming in very handy. Your submachine gun, I don't even... Oh, you're out of ammo. You used it all coming after me. Also out of ammo on this. What about the shotgun? Three shells, that's all you got? I think I'd rather just take the crowbar, to be honest. And there's a health kit. I don't imagine I'm going to be going back this way. Now what about these doors? Are they openable with the crowbar? You are. 
What about you? You are as well. I have to choose. Uh, but if you remember, I think there was some... I think there were some crowbarable doors back this way as well. Sometimes it pays to remember in this game. Yes, we can open this. And I bet there's probably some collectibles. Well, there's this one right here, at least. The Birdbath TV Achievement. And we can't come this way. Alright, so I guess... And some health. So I guess there's nothing left to do but to pick a stairway and ascend. Now, hopefully they both lead to the same place. I, I can't imagine this game going too non-linear on me. I can't imagine there being too much of a choice at play. Nope, 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 nope. Get back here. That's right, you're going nowhere. You're going nowhere fast. Stomp. That's right. Nine bullets. And from the sound of it, we're going to need them. No, you do not, sir. Man, who needs a gun? This taser is awesome. I think if I'm willing to be patient, this taser can actually get me through a lot of what's to come. Okay, this is not a crowbarable door. These are actually just bars. They're not even... That's probably the rare books... Well, main collection stacks. I was going to say that sounds like it would be the rare books cage, but maybe not. We can actually check these signs on the wall to see where we're going. So, Shelburne Reading Room, Reference Materials, Current Periodicals, Rare Books. So, Rare Books is this way, right? And I'm not going to bother with the detection tool because that is the sound cue that indicates we're looking for a dead bird. Actually, let's check it out. It seems quiet. Yep, there's one right there. It's going to want me to pick up that sledgehammer without actually... Without ever actually firing a shot from this gun. Yeah, I still have nine bullets. Killed two enemies, yet to fire a shot just using my taser and my foot. The old trusty combo. And there's another bird up there. Is there going to be some kind of puzzle here? Nope, no puzzle, just a ladder. Sled... What? Sledgehammer required? To break the lock? What... What do I need this ladder to do? Maybe I'm sliding it down to the edge? I was going to say, it looks like it already goes to the top, and I thought I'm going to walk along the top of these bookshelves, but I guess I can't do that because of the because of the columns between the windows. Alright, you... Get down there. Meanwhile, I'm going to go back and grab that gun, because there's no way I'm leaving a full ammo pistol just laying around. I don't know why there's, like, a full-on armed militia inside this burned-out library that's not even closed. Rosa. There she is. What happened Back to you? Off, you bastard. Come any closer and I'll rip your head off. Rosa, it's me, Thomas. Oh. Oh, he, he must have clobbered me in the back of the head before taking off. Are you okay? There, there were these, these shadowy things standing over you. What? Look, while you're chasing shadows, that jerk tried to kill me. I bit him good, though, right on the hand. Did you get any of the blood sampled? I saw some hit the floor. Yes, sampled and transferred back to the lab. Excellent. You can't just, like, check your phone for that right now? I can patch in through this computer and do a remote analysis. Bingo. DNA from the sample matches DNA taken from the metro station hideout. This is the guy. This is our serial killer X. He killed the policeman, and he's been killing all of the other guys on your case list. What did he want with you? He wanted to know what we knew about the torturer. He made me look it up on the net. He knows the whole MO now. The abduction, torture, suicide thing. Thomas, the torturer is on your case list, and he's the only one whose trail hasn't gone cold since we ran into... 
this serial killer X. X wants the torturer to die. He's hunting him down. Take a look at this. This is Jennifer Alden reporting from police headquarters. Developments in the case of the torturer serial killer. A retired gym teacher from the city's juvenile rehabilitation program has informed police of contact he had almost eight years ago with a troubled youth named Carl Anderson, who reported fantasies that match the torturer's methods exactly. Authorities are now asking the public to inform police if they know of Carl Anderson's whereabouts. Do not approach the suspect, as he should be considered armed and dangerous. Sources within the police department are telling me they are also concerned because their informant can no longer be located. Department spokespersons have refused comment on this latest development. This is Jennifer Alban, reporting for News Channel 5. Carl Anderson. Hmm. The gym teacher tells the cops on you, and now the teacher can't be found. Okay, Rosa, we have to find the school where this teacher worked. School and city district records are in the basement. Follow me. Hopefully this key will get us where we need to go. Yeah, I'm glad you still have it. Perhaps I should have held on to it. Perhaps that would have maybe served me a little bit more than it has you. Maybe that's just my protagonist syndrome talking. It's kind of hard not to consider myself the center of the universe when I kind of am. Okay, we're doing one of these. Just a slow tour through the library now. Is it just me, or have these visuals gotten kind of murky? You can see the fire damage on the walls. Some very nice environmental storytelling in that way. The state that each location is in kind of reflects the story of what's supposed to have happened there. So this is a place where things aren't abandoned, they're just kind of being moved around. Because the, the library's not abandoned, it just had a fire, so they're kind of reorganizing everything and doing construction work and all that. What? What the hell's that? Sounds like an animal is crawling around up there. Disturbing thing is, there's not really anywhere for it to go. Now, we encountered some crawlers in the sewers, but... Ah. Uh, but this is a little bit different. Any comment? Or are you just following me? Oh, you're actually following me. That's new. <laughs> I really am the protagonist. I really am the center of the universe. You're so focused on me, you're not even going to comment on the massive pile of gore you just stepped in. Which, by the way, as a forensic investigator, you should probably be much, much more concerned about. Looks like this is where the library suffered the most fire damage. One thing this game kind of that kind of bothers me about okay. it. There should be a stairwell that leads down to the microfiche room. It is that the entire cast does just kind of treat the homeless like they just don't matter. Like, they just treat them like enemies in a video game. I understand having them act, act this way for the purpose of having the game, you know, function as a game. It just bothers me how nobody seems to care. Like, you, you don't have to change anything else. Just have characters acknowledge that, like, these are people we're killing, you know? That is the indicator that there's another piece of metal right here. Now the question is, can enemies attack us while Rosa is in tow? And for that matter, is this an escort mission? Can she actually be injured? And will she help us in combat? I'm assuming the answer to all of these things is no. I have a feeling that you almost just got shot. I expected you to be coming right behind me. I didn't expect you to find your own path between the bookshelves. I will say, I really do love the design here. All these cramped spaces and narrow corridors between the bookcases. It, oh! Curtis, you okay down there? 
Yep, this is the moment where enemies yeah. can start spawning. Yeah, busted my flashlight though. Oh no. Stay put. I thought I saw something down there in the dark. I'll be there in a minute. Oh no. Wait for Rosa. Oh, I get it. I'm not supposed to progress. But I don't have a melee weapon. I'm gonna have to rely on tasing and stomping. There's somebody behind the shelf. Where'd you go? Oh, that was a really... That was a really ragged, rotted face. No. No. There's something else going on with the enemies. Now, like I said, I don't... Thomas. Thomas, it's me. Snap out of it. Here, take my flashlight. That was genuinely really scary. Make your way around to the doors on the other side. I'll let you in there. Now, as I've said, I don't really remember everything that's going on here. Standing in the dark without my flashlight makes me nervous. Yeah, you're telling me. There's definitely something else up with these enemies. Something more than just... Something more than just mental illness and drugs. I take it you were scripted. I don't know if I could have actually killed you. Eh, maybe I could have. Maybe I just missed. Always hard to tell when you don't have a crosshair. Now I can pick up a 2x4. But you died from the taser. So right now I'm going to assume that you guys just have less health. And I'm going to try to rely a little bit more on stomping and tasing. Ow. 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 Hey! God. You can't just hit me through the bookshelves. That's not very... There. And in fact, with the way the visuals worked out right there, I think that might have even been a glitch. Hey. There you go. <laughs> I love how they get launched. They just get launched when they die. That's how small and weak they are. Yet, yeah, provided I wait for my taser to recharge, I don't even have to fire any shots. The two, the two rounds that I've just expended are kind of a waste. I'm kind of reminded now of the library from the Ghostbusters game. With all these books being physics objects falling off the shelves. How convenient. Okay, jump down and see if you can find your way back to the stairs. I, I'll go back I, this way. I can totally make this jump. I can totally make this jump. Okay. Not quite low enough on health to grab these just yet. You know, I'll grab one. I'll grab one because how many times have we progressed forward only to find that we didn't even have the option of moving back? I'm going to take a moment to let my taser recharge. Because I'm going to save ammo that way. Now this is really nice level design right here. Because it's giving all these tight corridors... And all the while, you know it's a large space. These aren't hard walls. These are just... These are just objects filling a large room. But it's cluttered enough that it becomes these kind of smaller subspaces. And all the while... And all the while, the burned walls make everything seem darker than they really are. And you can hear the noises of these... Disfigured creatures skittering around all about us. Out! Stop doing that. Oh, I see. I see. You're not glitching through the bookcases. You're, uh, you're crawling between the shelves. That's actually quite clever. Hi. Nope, you were mid-animation. Tasers are not effective on people in mid-animation. It's the first thing they teach you in Police Academy. Grab that bird. Come on, there's one more. There's one more of you. Have I just looped back around to where I started? I can't tell if this is a new area or not. But I know there's at least one more of you. There's a gun. How much ammo? Five. I actually have more ammo in the other one. But I'll remember that it's here just in case. And I'll grab that. No, I think I am actually progressing. I think I am moving... Forward. What is... Yeah, I know. Guys, same reaction. Same reaction here. Ow. 
Oh. Well, I'm glad I saved all that ammo. Zero shells. Huh, I think that might have been a bug, me being able to pick it up in the firing position. Now, actually, now's a good time to go back and pick up that 45. Uh, real easy to get turned around in here, though. Or end up going down a long way only to get stuck. I don't think... I think I found the 45 past this, right? I think it was giving me that gun so that I could use it here. Here it is. It kind of blended in with the ground. Let's just... Let's get a move on. I'm just going to have a quick look back here to make sure... There's nothing else. No, this is actually the way I'm supposed to be going. Hang on, Rosa. <laughs> She's like, what is wrong with you right now? But I want to see if there's anything in that door that they opened. I hate that in games. I hate when I think that I'm taking that I'm taking the, uh, the explorey route. And it turns out that I was actually just taking the... I was actually just taking the way you're supposed to go. Okay, so now I found all the metal pieces but I didn't find one of the birds. So that's gonna bother me. Oh, sorry, Rosa, I'm a little bit out of shape. Jesus, Thomas, it took you long enough. Did you not hear all those gunshots? Did you not hear the firefight I've been in? There was a firefight! This is getting out of hand. We need to get this <laughs> You mind taking the lead through this area? Are we going? Rosa, what are we doing? Oh, we're going downstairs, I see. Are you coming? I better see you following me. I really don't like how far you're hanging back. This feels like a moment of forced separation to me. But I hear footsteps. Are those you or... Okay, here she comes. I can always tell she's coming. Oh, reliable Rosa and the way her feet phase through stairs. Doctors can't find a reason for it. Eight years ago would put the kid and the teacher at the same school in 1997. Here it is. Anderson Carl. There's a lot of Carl Andersons, but I bet this is our guy. He was enrolled or sentenced to an educational rehabilitation center for the severely troubled. St. Joseph's Secondary on Northeast 52nd and Fremont. It's been closed for five years, and no wonder. That's one of the worst parts of town. Christ, the cops have just been letting it go to hell for years. And yeah, what about the faculty? It doesn't list occupations, just a list of names. I'll take it back to the lab and see what I can find. It's him. He's been listening to us. It looks like we've attracted other unwanted attention. Okay, it looks like we have ourselves a little bit of a defense mission. I love this taser so much. I don't even have to... Uh, I don't even have to enact the labor. Nope, you can't have the shotgun. Are you not dead? Oh, come on. Wait, my taser's not recharged yet. Ow! Hang on, my taser's not recharged. And it's become such a crutch that I don't really want to use anything else. Thank you. I'll take your paper cutter. The exit. We need to make a run for it. Uh, I can't really run. Rosa, you know me. I'm ridiculously out of shape. Now oh, there's a shotgun right here. Um... 
Okay, I suppose I am just leaving without, uh, without finding that last dead bird. Rosa, you know how disappointing it is when I leave a location well, without at least six X. dead birds in my pocket. He's got the same information we do, so that means he's also going to go to the school. Perhaps I can catch two killers with one net. I'll drive you there, then head back to HQ and work on that faculty list. Favorite weapon. Boot. Uh, well... I have to go eat dinner now, but I feel like that's a good place to stop recording. Of course, I'm going to try to get all to this to you in one video. But the next time I start talking, it'll be a different recording set. An APB has been issued by local PD for FBI agent Ethan Thomas, who mysteriously disappeared after his gun was used to kill two local detectives. Even though the agent's name is yet to be released to the press, local PD is taking the situation very seriously and reportedly will use force if necessary to bring the alleged cop killer into custody. Thomas, it's Malcolm. How are you doing? Is the investigation going well? Why did you just address me like we're on the phone? It's going as well as it can be. Wait, what are you doing here? How did you know where to find me? Oh, just a coincidence. Saw you from across the street. Coincidence? I don't know what your game is here, Van Horn, but I've got a job to do, if you'll excuse me. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Condemned Criminal Origins. A totally pointless intro, because no time has passed for you. This is a long play. Uh... It's only been about 12 hours since I last played, but I do kind of need to get back into the groove now that I'm starting a new recording session. So where last we left off, we... Okie doke! Uh, we realized we had to come to this school in order to search for a former, I think, gym teacher here? Who knows the location of the torturer, who is the serial killer that our serial killer X will be headed after next. And, as before, there's for some reason still power on in this place. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I kind of wish that, uh, that more games would allow me to only rely on my flashlight. But I suppose that's not the easiest thing to do. Yeah, get him, Tables! Ah, oh, you suck. He got away. Okay, I need a sledgehammer to get up to whatever... To whatever activities are taking place up there. I really want to find a better weapon. Hopefully I can pick something up. Can I grab one of these pipes? No, I, can, I can't pick up that pipe. I can only grab another 2x4. Uh, and it seems... I can't tell if that's just the lighting or if my vision is actually being distorted as I come down this hallway. Hello? Don't even think about running. <laughs> I know your game. I'm gonna approach and then you're gonna scurry off, right? Well, I'm a little bit more of a thinker than that. It's gonna be a metal piece over there. And, oh, we actually can unlock the door from behind. Okay. I don't know if we're gonna have to come back this way later, but it's at least helpful to have that other avenue. Let's just grab that metal piece and continue on our way. Yeah, these are kind of the environments that this game is more remembered for. And to be totally honest, for as much as people didn't like Condemned 2, I thought that overall it had more and better environments like this. And it's just that the story took some really stupid turns, but everything that made Condemned 2 stupid was at least present in this one. It's just that this one... Oh, well, that's moved back. The tables have turned against me. Uh, everything that made Condemned 2 kind of dumb is at least present in this one. It's just that this one doesn't seem to feel as much of a need to explain itself. And so everything that had a dumb explanation... Well, it was leaving you to use your imagination, so you didn't know it had a dumb explanation. I 
I feel like my vision is really heavily distorted. Like, if you look on the bottom of the screen, like, it's all very blurry, right? I hope the level isn't going to be all like that. I'd like to be able to appreciate this. Oh, listen to the sound design. You can just hear the glass crunching under your feet. If I go like that, you can hear the bottles rolling. It's actually possible in this game to jump scare yourself by kicking over a bottle. That's good sound design. Oh yeah, I forgot about you. It's the lunch lady. Sending her little lackeys after me. Now I want to back up a little bit to make sure I don't get flanked from behind. I know how much these guys like to... Come on, come on, there we go. Ah, oh, that taser kicked in just in time. I really shouldn't be relying on it so much. This upgraded taser... At first I wasn't even sure if it was doing anything, but it's quickly becoming a crutch. Okay, this just takes me back out into the hallway where I came from. Where are you? I don't want to get ambushed by any gigantic lunch ladies leaving the burner on. It would actually be quite wise of me in this situation to turn that off. Because if this place catches fire while I'm on the hunt for someone, I wouldn't want to have to leave. Knowing that all the knowing that all the evidence that I'm looking for would be going up in smoke. Ah, oh, thank God for auto-aim on the taser. <laughs> I just smacked you right through that block. I am powerful. Ah, uh, but as before, we're seeing that some of them do have a little bit more health than others. Each enemy type doesn't only have a fixed amount of health, so they can always surprise you. I see this game is an early adopter of something that I've been noticing on some more recent uh, Gary's Mod maps. They actually show the gaps in the ceilings, and if there's a crack in the wall, there will actually be a space inside the wall. It's not just like the wall is one solid surface. There's an in-between. It's a really nice attention to detail that really brings a lot to portrayals of decaying environments. What kind of strange bathroom setup is this? No doors? Hi. No, you don't. Up until this point, I've been fairly willing to give you guys a pass and let you leave if you're not going to hurt me. Uh, but you guys are way too weird, and I feel like I'm kind of purifying the world by removing you from it. Okay, so so far in this playthrough, I'm using classist and I don't know ableist language. I'm not sure what I'm not sure what that would fall under. Loose lips sink ships. Uh, the point is, this game is turning me into a Nazi by making me hate on the downtrodden. No, you don't. I see you reaching for that gun. That was a legitimate police killing. How much ammo in this gun? Only two shells. But these paper cutters are everywhere. I'm sure I can find another one. Now, it was telling me to use my forensic tool. Ah, here we go. Start sending data when ready. I guess Rosa is back at the lab. I, I don't like this curtain. That's our guy. He's here somewhere. I really don't like how it froze me with that curtain there. That is such a weird setup for a classroom, isn't it? Like, is that something that a classroom would ever actually have? I mean, I suppose in I suppose in cases where you may need to 
in a pinch split a room into two separate classrooms you could do it but i feel like that would be very a, a very distracting way to learn then again this is a low income area and it's a school for i guess troubled boys okay so a little bit of a story time uh, my school in fifth grade was i'm gonna fall through here might not have time for story time Uh, die, Smeagol. I'm not gonna waste a shotgun shell on you. And there we go. We've just averted... We've just averted the events of Return of the King. Uh, I love how... I love how these lights are actually dynamic. They move about the room in a way that's unscripted. That's really, really impressive for the time period. And even for now, not a whole lot of things do it. Uh, but anyway, back to story time. When I was in fifth grade, I I loved that school. It wasn't it wasn't an elementary or a middle school. It was what you'd call an intermediate school, which I don't think exists everywhere. It's fifth and sixth grade. I was only there for fifth, but I loved that place because it was a really old building. It was like a haunted castle. And the interior structures were so dark and nonsensical and they had all these weird like ramps and staircases and windows where there shouldn't be windows. I loved that place. And in my classroom, it was actually two classrooms like that, but it was two full rooms that were both circles, and in the middle where the circles pinched together, I think we may have come across the lunch lady's lair, but in the middle of those two classrooms where they pinched together was a stage with a curtain, so you could close that curtain to divide the classrooms. Architecturally, it was just such a cool place. Oh, ow! See, that was definitely way, way farther than he should have been able to hit me from. And now that I've kicked you twice, you'll probably die to the taser, right? No, not even. You impressed me with your strength, little man. Now where's that lunch lady? Eh, you're not the lunch lady, you're something else. You have a gun, so I'm gonna take a shot at you. You're not even dead, are you kidding? You just tanked two shotgun blasts. Well, I suppose I'm glad you've lost that health now. And now you're dead. He was still able to get a shot off on me. Can I climb through? Yeah, there we go. I'm not a huge fan of these contextual, uh... Of these contextual acrobatic options. Personally, I'd prefer to be able to do it through gameplay. But I suppose there's some segments where the scripting kind of relies on it. And I suppose they don't really want you to be all that mobile. It does kind of help with the sense of helplessness, knowing that I can't really run away if I want to. So we have two guns here. Both are pretty much full. I'm going to take the shotgun, but I'm going to keep in mind that that handgun is back there. Did nothing just happen? I'm low on ammo. Okay, need you to be dead. Nah, no, 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 no. Crap, 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 crap. That was the wrong time. That was the wrong time to run out of ammo. Okay, pick up a gun. I haven't seen any health in a while either. Uh, some cool ballistics right there, though. How I clipped that guy, and it shattered the, it shattered the case to the trophies behind him. And where did he go? Got a stun lock him. Can't let him get up. I used four bullets right there. I gotta find myself some health. What about the submachine gun? How much ammo left in you? Eh, only eight bullets. I suppose I'll carry it for a while just to see what it's like. Health. Health, health, health. Yes, I definitely am in need of health. Ah, oh, you're so gross. You're like some kind of evil wolfman Hagrid. So now we've got a couple of guns to choose from. We've got full health. We're definitely doing a little bit better than we were before, but anytime it starts allowing me to progress a fairly long way like this, I start to get nervous that I'm leaving something important behind. Is that a door? It is. And there's the sledgehammer. We probably need that to open something up. 
And we have three health kits in here. Uh, I, I, the thing is, I don't really want to put this thing down. I hate leaving all these fully loaded guns behind. I would especially like to, uh, I would especially like to have a gun ready whenever we encounter that lunch lady. Now what's over here? Have I looked in this room yet? Yes, this is where I got my health. So upstairs here is probably going to be where we have to get that sledgehammer to do some work. No? Maybe we don't actually need it. Maybe it's just in there as a treat for me to use as a weapon, as a reward for looking all that way. But personally, I don't really care for the heavy weapons like that. I prefer to be fast and light on my feet. What was that noise? So how's your day going? That sounded like I fired more than seven bullets. I'm not going to grab the rebar. I'm going to get the conduit and see how it compares. Yeah, the conduit is better in every way to the rebar. Is there anything up here I can see if I climb the bleachers? No. Anything over here? No. I know I kind of abandoned the exploring for a while, but I'm going to want to try and do a little more of that now. Here we are jumping down, so say goodbye to all those guns we had. I knew you'd try something like this. Now I'm going to want to learn lessons from before. Be patient. What is this, Metro? Yeah, we're going to want to be patient and wait for our taser to recharge whenever possible. Because, you know, I've come to think of it as a crutch, but I also got to look at it from this perspective. Somebody around that corner. It wouldn't have given it to me if I wasn't meant to use it. Okay, you did the option. You did the thing. I don't know why I'm saying option. You did the animation like you crawled up into the ceiling, but there's nothing there. See, I, lo I love some of the hallucinations and, like, possibly supernatural elements. I, I love it when it's just that, did I really see that? Or that guy just did something that he couldn't possibly have really done. I, I like that way more than those hallucination segments and those visions. I feel like that's a much better way to get across the sanity slippage and convey that to the player. Do little things like that that aren't necessarily obvious if you're not paying attention. Things that actually do make the player doubt their own sanity, not just the sanity of the character. No. Sucks to be you, fella. Oh, he's having a little seizure. I've come across several freezers while exploring. Something I've never done is allowed everyone to be inside of it at once. Because freezer doors can close behind you. And they're big and heavy doors. Is that going to happen here? Let's find out. Didn't work out for your friend. What made you think it would work for you? <laughs> that is such a comical voice, but... At the same time, it is sort of scary. Uh, I'm going to case you and hit you in the head with this, if you don't mind. Yeah, hang on. If you could just uh, stick back there while I wait for my taser to recharge, that'd be cool. I'm just going to get around you, if I may. Come on. Oh, I'm actually cornered by the fat lady. Nope. Ah, there we go. Now I'm getting the hang of it. Yes. You just have so much health, don't you? Why am I wait? Why am I not tasing you? What am I even doing? I got so I got so involved in the I got so wrapped up in having finally mastered well not mastered I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get that cocky that quickly of having finally gotten used to the melee combat that I completely forgot about the taser for a second. 
please just die. Is there something special that I'm supposed to do? Because that's going to be really difficult if he's tapping me in the corner like this. I'm dead. I'm dead! How much health do you have, lady? That was so stupid. Could I have maybe taken the cleaver from her? I don't... I don't know if that would have worked on her. Okay, let's get back in there. That was really annoying. I hit her so many times. How much health does she have? Kill you. The taser really just is the middle finger button, isn't it? Just made all the more... All the more apt by the fact that I literally activate it by clicking my middle finger. Denied. I still think the model for it looks like something that uh, Dr. Kleiner would make in his lab, or something that I would be using in Half-Life Alex, uh, which I still haven't finished yet. Okay, can I disarm you? I cannot! Ah, uh, but there is an axe on that table. Maybe that's the move. Maybe that's what I should do. This is definitely also a better place to trap her than meat cleaver required. Are you kidding me? I have to kill her to get it. Oh, she's gonna get me. She's gonna get me. I can't. I can't do all this. I can't tear through all her health this way. I'm just not gonna be able to do it. Oh come on! I thought she was glitching out. That's so unfair. Oh, this is gonna be a problem. I feel like I need a weapon that does more damage. Is there something else I can get back here? I definitely need to do a lot more damage than what's being offered by this conduit. What about you? Less damage, more speed? No, that's not what I need. Is there anything else back here? Okay, so that's the door that I need to use the fire axe on. But I guess I need her cleaver to chop that hand so I can get the fire axe. Which means I can't pick it up to use in the fight against her. Not only that, I can't disarm her. I can't tase her and pull the cleaver out of her hand. Which would be very useful right about now. The small pipe does do more damage, and it has more reach. Which means that if I can hit her from the other side of the table, that's going to do a lot for me. <laughs> I don't even need to tase these guys. I can just slap them off the line. <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine the conversation that must have happened before this. Like her arguing with them, like, yeah, get yourself on the hook. No, totally, this is an awesome plan, it's gonna work. He's not gonna have any idea you're alive, he's gonna think you're strung up like meat. They're like, no, Ma, I don't wanna do it. Trust me, it, 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 this'll work. Do, do, do this so you're not getting anything for Christmas. And slap. And she can presumably still hit me, but... If I can hit her from across the table, I would imagine that she can hit me. And I also just noticed that, uh, on impact, that, uh, that rack hanging above the table moves. That's kind of cool. There's a lot of cool physics stuff going on in here. Yep, I think I found the exploit. But is it even an exploit? I kind of think this is probably what you're supposed to do. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, it's like running away from my siblings when I was younger. And I can hit her across the table, even without her being tased. Yep, I do just have to be a little faster, I think. I think that's the way to do it. Don't get cornered, be a little faster. And tase her when you can. <laughs> tase her, I hardly know her. Slap! You're welcome to start dying at any time. My weapon is literally coated in your blood, which... At this point, I think you should probably just take the L. Ah, your animations are getting a little bit more aggressive. Uh, at this point, you should probably be going into cardiac arrest from all the times you've been tased. Uh, but that's you done. I must say, I really do enjoy how that was such a downplayed boss fight. I mean, at the end of the day, all she was was just a stronger person. You know, it didn't play any music. It didn't... It didn't try to have any kind of gimmick or health bar. The gameplay was entirely consistent with everything else we've been doing up until this point. She was just really tough. I believe in game design you would refer to that as a mini-boss, but... 
I feel like even mini-bosses tend to be a little bit more involved than that. And I mean that in a good way. I feel like, you know, it didn't break its realism too much. It was able to have that boss fight without making it get all cartoony and goofy. Now, was there anything else I could break down, possibly over here? And don't think I didn't hear the sound of that clattering. Although maybe I just knocked over some bottles. Yeah, I must have kicked this can down the hallway. Or maybe that bottle right there. Alright, let's break through this door and see what we can see. Oh, now we're down on the gym floor. Ominous. Foreboding. All of these things. And I hear what sounds like someone shuffling around on the other side of the curtain. Well, there's somebody somewhere. Are you under the bleachers, maybe? I bet those little crawly guys could get under there. What about these doors? Can I open them? Turn power on. Is the power not already on? I mean, I've already encountered a bunch of lights that were turned on. And it seems less than wise to touch an electrical box that's sparking. You remember what happened the last time? I was framed for a double murder. What is that? Uh, this looks like a job for forensics. Also, Rosa, whenever you want, get back to me on the stuff that I sent to you while we were in the library. The stuff you never gave me a read on. <laughs> get a read on. At the library? I kill me. It's Tibbetts. Fingerprints from his personnel file match the hand. It looks like the torturer got to him before we did. Well, that complicates things. Whoa. I see this school is also doing the gymatorium combo. All the schools I ever went to had a dedicated gym and auditorium. But, uh... Oh, there's enemies down there. But I went to Boy Scout meetings at a few of them that uh, had this combo. Or some of them didn't have a gymatorium. Some of them also had a cafetorium. Another metal piece. Now I can't crouch, so I can't follow you over there. But I'll make a mental note of the fact that you can come from behind me at any time. Is someone perhaps going to break through there? Nope, it's just meant to show me what's on the other side. Now I can climb up the ladder here. But, oh, nope, there's nowhere to go. Only thing I can do is climb up. It's been a little while since the last enemy encounter, so I'm a little bit on edge, waiting to see where the next thing is going to come from. I can open this door, but what's upstairs? It's that age-old gaming dilemma where I'm not sure which is the exploration path and which way is the progression path. This definitely looks like a progression path. Yes, it played a sound cue when I opened the door, so that's the progression path. So what's this way? I think I'm descending now past that brick wall where that enemy was, yes. Alright, what have we got? Ah, a collectible. Alright, now let's get into that. That almost looked like an outdoor area. Like some kind of alleyway, maybe? I hope we're not done with the school just yet. I feel like I remember there being more to this. Hmm. Now 
Now I think we all know there's no way it lets me get through this area without some form of an enemy encounter, right? There's just no way. A body? Oh, it's just me. Thomas speaking. Never mind, it's a hallucination. I just wanted to make sure you met me up front when we were done. I didn't want to interfere with the investigation, but... Yeah, see, to me, these visions are just kind of lame. They don't, they don't scare me. I don't know what purpose they're supposed to serve. Also, as I said before, I'm pretty much 100% sure that these cheese poops are a reference to, are a reference to fear. Which, as I, as I explained, this game is by the same developer. Now, hang on, I gotta tase you. There you go. Rebar, ow. Come on, come on, ow, 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 no, hang on, move, let me move, let me pass, let me pass. You two duke it out amongst yourselves, and then I'll play winner. No, I said I'll play winner. Now you're the winner. Guns, there's guns. Okay, I need to move. I need to move, I can't fight this. Ow. I wish I still- I wish I hadn't missed with that taste, I'd be able to snatch the thing out of his hand, but as it stands, he's just a dangerous, spinning whirlwind of death. Ah, oh, where'd your gun go? Ah, oh, I was not prepared for that at all. I turned around and there were guys right there, and from then on, I, my head was just not in it. And there's your gun over there. How much ammo left, though? Probably not a lot. Eh, ten bullets. I think it's worth taking with me. If only for, like, the one... Oh, I think that was just the sound of me kicking a dodgeball. I'm gonna take the one piece of health. And rifle. I don't even remember there being a rifle in this game, to be honest. But I think... I think five bullets... from the rifle will most likely do more damage than ten from the machine gun, right? Jump down. <laughs> I suppose it's not going to give me any other choice. That did not look like a window. That looked more like a piece of plywood. But what's an ever? Anything up here? Now it does look like it'll enable me... No. I thought this would be one of those places where I can open up a path back to another area. Does not seem to be the case. You are in bad shape, mister. You're missing an arm, so I guess you're the one I'm looking for. looking for What am I looking for? Game, what is it that I'm looking for? Ah, right here. All right, do your incredible remote magic. Come at me, Brez. I got a rifle. And to be honest, I'm just really eager to try it out. Okay, that did more than just fall over. You saw it walk, right? Doors shouldn't walk. Doors, doors don't even have feet. It's, it's, it's an upset to the natural order when a door tries to walk. I can grab rebar out of these broken walls. Where are you? I'd hate to waste rifle ammo on those small skinny guys.
But I will. I certainly, certainly will. And what did it say? It said he's in one of these lockers. Well, probably not one of these lockers. They're much too small. Yeah, but then again, maybe he's shorter than he looked. And that's the reminder I need that one of these skinny guys could totally fit inside one of these things. So I'm going to spend the rest of the level paranoid about that. Let's grab some of this health, which will leave some for later. Eh, screw it. What better time to use a rifle? And I must say, that was pretty satisfying. Hopefully there's not somebody bigger gonna come at me. There's almost been kind of a reverse difficulty curve on the enemies. He's gotta be around here somewhere. But first, let me check the showers. Yes? Any more of you want to come crawling out of here? Because it seems like you're fixing to do just that. <laughs> I can't believe I actually hit him. Oh, it's like XCOM. I was on Overwatch. I need a shovel to get through here. Okay, I guess I'm off in search of a shovel then, which most likely means I'm gonna have to search those lockers. This is probably the way I'm supposed to exit this part. Go ahead. There we go. Now see, but that's the thing though, is that I, I mentioned before how I don't like those visions. I feel like a lot of them are meant to tell me something, but why couldn't those just be replaced by investigation segments and make them at least have a little bit more to their gameplay? Like, why did I have to see a vision of that guy running over and getting in a locker? Why couldn't I have just been following a blood trail with the UV light like before? Trail just ends at a bank of lockers. What does that tell you? Have you looked inside? I love how this guy has to be told to do every little bit of his job. Found him. We all know what this is. We all know what this is. Take a close up of the face of the dead body in the locker. We all know the jump scare is coming, of course we do. And the developers know that we know the jump scare is coming. And yet, our progression is locked behind it. In that way, it's actually kind of genius. It's as expected as it could possibly be, but it's gonna make you do it anyway. Yep. Me. Help is on the way. Who did this to you? Carl Anders. The torturer. Okay, take it easy. Do you know where he is now? Other man came to Carl away. Left me here to die. <sighs> Rosa, send an EMT immediately. Cancel. He ragdolled. That's how you know he's dead. That's how medical professionals do it. Oh, 
but you had a shovel. Two points of note. DNA taken from the hair matches current profile we've established for the guy who's been stalking you, the guy we're calling Serial Killer X. Also, there are some additional organophosphate particles present. Similar to the pesticide we found on the matchmaker's neck? An exact match. I've been running an analysis on those samples. It's azenfos methyl and is class one, highly toxic. Was previously used as an insecticide for all sorts of agricultural crops, now banned for domestic use, and can only be used commercially by permission. This particular formulation includes some other trace chemicals and can be matched to a brand name called Applewell. I've put in a contact to the company to see if we can get a purchaser's list. Applewell. Apples. Yes, as I said, it was used on all sorts of <laughs> We're doing that great detective work. Would be one of those. Yeah, the town of Briar is pretty rural. Any chances there's an apple orchard up there? I'll get right on it. Alright, now we're gonna have to abandon this gun and pick up the shovel in order to get ourselves a move on. Probably more of you now, right? Those actually sound like they're coming from the area I just left. I'm gonna... I'm gonna skedaddle and see if I can't maybe avoid an enemy encounter. Am I being followed? I'm not sure if it's actually possible to hide from enemies, or if they'll just hone in on you no matter what. What is going on over there? Oh, there's a pool. So, my high school had a pool, and when I realized that that was the case, like, when I when I was in middle school and I learned the high school has a pool, I was so stoked, because I used to love swimming. And then I got to high school, and I did the swimming, and it was the worst thing ever, because that pool was friggin' gross. The whole bottom was, like, slimy, and you, you, you just know that that's people juice. Okay, don't remember this at all. I'm also not really sure how that shovel's standing up. Whoever put it there probably doesn't want me to move it. Because that's quite an accomplishment right there. A feat of balance and physics. Now, I feel like my shovel was up in time to block that. Ow, I'm getting hit from behind. Die, please. Ah, uh, they're just gonna swarm me, aren't they? Come on, how is that not a block? My shovel is all the way up. Come on! My shovel is all the way up and they're still hitting me. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, I guess we have to repeat that whole thing all over again. Gonna move on. The shovel is way too slow. I wonder if there's something else above the pool that I could pick up to make this easier. Ah, here we go. A paper cutter. Now we'll do what we always do. I guess they're gonna drop down from the windows above. Okay, he's the first guy. Let the second charge go as high as we can. Yes, this is much better. Ow. Come on. I can never be sure about the reach of these things. Haze you. Dead. Just gotta control the flow, control the tide. Take them as they come. Now 
Can I make my way up and out? I can grab a machine gun, that's useful. And I guess I have the machine gun in real life now. Imagine if that were real. Imagine if you could have a dream and wake up with whatever objects you picked up in the dream. That would be so cool. That's a post-scarcity world right there. Now this looks like a fire axe door. Which means that's what we're going to be on the hunt for. That sounded like it came from behind. Okay, I guess I can't just climb through this window here. Somebody's about. There you are. Get back here. Really not a fan of all the points in this game where you'll see someone running, you'll round the corner to meet them, and they're not there. I'm sure that's deliberate. And is actually a very excellent piece of, uh, of level design. Fire axe and fire axe in a basket. It was actually somewhat expertly placed between the between the grates in the basket. Come on, knock it down. And of course I'm not taking the fire axe with me when it's just given me a perfectly good machine gun. There's a startling overabundance of automatic weapons in the hands of the homeless in this city. I was kind of hoping I'd be able to tase through the door. I didn't want to expend the ammo on him, but I didn't want him to get away either. That was not the wind. Okay, what's going on here? This game doesn't use soundtrack often, so when it does... It really does a good job at heralding the onset of a dread moment. But hang on, ghosts. I don't have time for you. I'm getting collectibles. That's all three metal pieces for the school. I haven't really seen that many birds. Or at least I don't think so. This level has gone on for quite a while. Also, the school has a lot of locker rooms and showers. Was, didn't they say it was an all-boys school? What do you need more than one for? I always get nervous when there's a delay on opening a door in a horror game. It makes me think something's going to show up behind me. Also, very surprised that I made it through that hallway unmolested, but I guess it's just culminating in another vision. Hi. <laughs> I love how I can still use the taser during this, what is ostensibly a cutscene. See, and you can't just play the whole paranormal card because... Oh, I'm getting thrown around. It really is fear. You can't say that it's just paranormal. Because the consequences of these visions are all still there when I come to. Oh, please tell me I still have the machine gun. No! I never even got to fire a shot! There are no currently licensed fruit orchards in the town or the surrounding countryside of Briar. But there was one once. Apple Seed Orchard, just outside of Briar on Route 4. In business for 40 years, but closed its doors just 10 years ago after a tremendous outbreak of apple maggots. The orchard never recovered. Curious, though. County deeds show it's owned by an out-of-state real estate firm. That's cool. Can I get my machine gun back now? Hi. 
<laughs> I love how he doesn't say anything. He's just standing there at the exit like he was waiting for me the whole time. He knows that the interiors of buildings are linear progressions. Summary. Yesterday, the police commissioner announced his plan to take back the destabilized zones of the city through the efforts of highly trained police riot squads. Not satisfied with this plan, Councilman Simmons has counterproposed the so-called Citizen Self-Protection Act, which is now generating massive controversy within City Hall. So that's one of two things. That's either you're on your own or arm the citizenry. Although from the looks of it, the citizenry is already quite armed. So why are you in on this? I have uh, a sense of responsibility. I needed to help. Help? You mean with my investigation? Yes, among other things. <laughs> there was a time I thought I was the best investigator the Bureau ever had. Now it seems they were interested in me for other reasons. What do you mean? I saw my file. Apparently I'm some sort of circus freak to them. Hmm. That may not be helpful. I wonder how much they know of what is happening. I would stay away from the Bureau as long as I could. It's not like I have much choice, since they still think I killed those two officers. Their deaths were unfortunate, but maybe it's best this way. Best? You seem to know a lot more about what's happening than you're letting on. This is Appleseed Orchard Estate. Stay on your toes. I'll drop you off at the house and head over to the barn. I'll meet up with you later. Hello everyone, and welcome to Let's Play Resident Evil 7. Seriously, the the thing that I think reminded me of this game when I went to play it was probably Yahtzee's review. Yahtzee reviewed this game early on, shortly after he started even making his videos, and he said that part of what made this so great, I, I think his commentary was sort of He's the first person I've heard acknowledge the importance of realistic environments in horror. I'll put it that way. He said that part of what made this so scary was that it took place in a normal house. I believe this is the last level. And, you know, the expansion on that is what I've been saying. It's all properly scaled and detailed. I mean, look at this. It's just a regular farmhouse. There's a table, some chairs, a nice little sitting area. It's exactly the kind of place that would exist. And being able to feel the familiarity in this type of environment, and especially getting the feeling that this is a place that people occupied, not just something that's been designed for my enjoyment, it helps you to immerse yourself. There's an element of believability I've never been able to find quite the right words to describe it and I'm certainly not succeeding here but I think you probably know what I mean nothing in here and I'm seeing certain things on the ground that I can't tell if they're fabric or gore There's been a lack of enemies, but I can hear them all around me. You know what? From this angle, this does sort of look like the kitchen in the guest house in Resident Evil 7, doesn't it? Ugh. Ah, oh, great, there's a basement. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and see what else I can see first. It doesn't seem that I can open this door, so I'm going to have to go around. 
it's not a huge area, so I definitely want to get a feel for the space that I'm in before I start making any moves to get things done. Yeah, no such luck. Ah, oh, that's not footsteps. That's actually the sounds of the shutters banging in the wind. Actually, now that I think about it, that's such an iconic element of horror. And I don't know if I've seen any other games do it. I don't even know if Resident Evil 7 did it. Okay, we have three health packs right here. That might be my allowance for this area. Anyone else here? Well, there's a sledgehammer, but as far as I know, I don't have anything that needs to be broken down with it. Although I'll keep in mind for future reference that it's there. What if I head upstairs? I just realized it's giving me the notification to use the detection tool. Oh yeah, that wasn't me. That sound was not me. There's definitely enemies here. Some kind of children's room? That's not a trail. Somebody's written that. Taser at the ready. Actually, I could potentially hide in that closet if I need to. Sledgehammer required. Okay, that's where it's needed. But the question is, should I break that down first, or should I go into the basement first? There's another sledgehammer. Door is locked. See, this is such a great exercise in tension building, because I've explored basically this whole house, and I haven't even seen an enemy. But I certainly have heard enough of them to know that I'm not alone. That light switch actually does work. How is the power on in all of these places? It doesn't make any sense. I can kind of... So, I do complain about games now that don't... That don't allow games to just kind of have their own darkness to... That feel a need to place ambient light in places where it shouldn't logically be. But I guess this game can sort of be forgiven because it's 2005 and areas illuminated by flashlight would probably not look quite as good. That's not just any... That's not just any door. That's an attic. Okay, let me grab... Let me go grab my steam pipe again. Or is this what I was holding before? No, there was something else on... There was something else that I dropped, wasn't there? How does this thing compare? Better damage and speed, it's just not as good at block. This is what I want, then. It's like a carousel horse. What is that doing here? Hello? Hello? There's health. There's health. There's health. You know what that means. Die. It's you. Just give me one moment for my taser to recharge, bro. Thank you for being patient. Ah, oh, you're stronger than the average. No idea what that's about, but he possessed that box. It's like prop hunt. I'm on to you. Alright, let's take this health because, let's be real, I'm not going to be coming back up here if I can help it. And I can drop down into there. But there was another way I didn't go yet, so I want to make sure I search everywhere. Yeah, I came through this doorway. I didn't look over here. Okay, there's a bird. I've already found, like, most of them. I think I've... So I found all but one bird. 
all but one or two birds. I honestly wasn't paying attention. Wait, I can pick up your weapons. It's better in everything except reach. Oh, that's cool. Unfortunately, I can't seem to dual wield them, but I guess that requires finesse that's a little bit beyond me. This must be the door that was locked from the other side. <laughs> okay, I haven't even really been following that text. To righteousness is. Maybe I was supposed to have gone down to the basement first. Then again, I haven't really been using it to look around the house. Maybe... Maybe there were more that I was supposed to find. Not just in the basement, but everywhere. And you know what? Now I'm now realizing that's probably why I can turn the lights on and off. So that the UV light will work better. Okay, let's start doing real detective work now. So that goes up to there. Let's turn that light off. We've already been up to the attic. What about here? That door is still locked, sadly. If I turn the light off? No, nothing new. Okay. I guess there probably really is nowhere to go but down. Unless maybe there's something over here to see. I do have to check everywhere. I would hate to be wandering around lost with no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. No, it just loops around this way. Okay, game, you win. Basement it is. I totally haven't been putting it off. Who's putting it off? You're putting it off. I have to say, it does make this level feel a lot creepier. Going around with only the UV light. It honestly just goes back around to making me wish that this game kind of had the guts to just allow a level to be completely dark. I hear guys. And then again, it's probably just going to throw another one of those little mini-bosses at me. These eyes would... See, every time... Every time I take a step, I have to ask myself, is that... <laughs> What? What is going on here? Did I get you? That was some severe glitchiness. Uh, middle piece. Okay, that's piece two out of three. Are you dead? I have to make sure you're dead. That, that was very obviously a bug. But you're gone. Are you hiding up here somewhere? Oh, well, that's even worse. That's that now. Now we have ourselves a "Where's the Spider?" moment. I don't know where that guy even went. I don't think he could have come back down into the basement, but I certainly didn't kill him. You gonna come crawling out from under what looks like some kind of patio? That's like a cellar door. Can I push that open? No. This kind of reminds me of the basement from, uh, from Silence of the Lambs. Here's our enemy. There's our squatter. It reminds me a little bit of the basement from Silence of the Lambs. When Jodie Foster has to go down. And the guy turns the lights off on her. Hello. More health. Now, I feel like I've looped all the way around, but 
Hello, that looks like something that should be breakable, but the fact that it's not has me nervous that something's going to come out of it. Okay, so I've done a full loop. We're, no, 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 stop, 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 stop. I can't do anything while I'm putting it away. Aw, uh, the game waited for me. That is some bull crap. The game waited for me to pull out my UV light so that it could send enemies at me. Here we go. Nope, 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 nope. I hear you. You always, always have to keep an ear out. Now let's see if I can take this picture unmolested. It looks like another clue. There must be more. Keep looking. Okay, that's two out of four, but where's the other two? They must be upstairs somewhere. They must be. There must have been some places I missed that I could check. Maybe something in the kitchen. Have I tried there yet? Maybe the fridge? Sup? <laughs> this, guy's, this guy's looking up. Hey, you going to the store? Can you get some beer? No, I cannot. I've definitely abandoned my live-and-let-live live attitude when it comes to these guys. Plus, I don't really know if they can follow me up here or not. Now, is this just going to lead to the basement? No. Okay, so that's three out of four. Where could the last one be? Now, they've all tended to be hidden so far. That one was in the oven. There was one in a in a piano bench. One down here. So the last one will probably be upstairs, right? I've yet to find a crowbar to open up that safe with. Maybe in the fireplace? No. I'm racking my brain here trying to think, where haven't I looked with this UV light? Actually, now I look at it, each of these branches off and goes somewhere different. Maybe in this fireplace. There's that initial piece of text and then it branches off going four ways. There's actually four different lines. It doesn't just loop through the house. Well, I think this one doubles back. I think this is the same one. And this just ends up taking me back to here. So there was nothing over there? I feel like I'm missing something. Yeah, this is the kind of thing I would normally cut out in a regular Let's Play. Maybe in this fireplace? There hasn't been one in a fireplace yet. Take this opportunity to heal. Oh no, this is where the bench is. This door was locked before. Maybe something in this closet? Maybe if I close myself inside? No, sadly not. It's actually quite bright in here. Can I kick over this light? Make it darker in here? Unfortunately, I still don't see anything. That leads up to the attic, which I cannot open now, so presumably that's just the one that leads me to the switch. Uh, sorry, not the switch, the piano bench. Yeah, what am I missing? Ah, right here. I feel like I've already searched the whole place. Dark path to righteousness. 
is beyond which you see yourself to be. Like a mirror? Only place I've seen a mirror is in the basement. That object was quite conspicuously detailed. I bet that's where I'm supposed to go. Uh, which means... Waiting once more into the dark. And more importantly, there's enemies down there. I will say, it does kind of add to the creepy old farmhouse, knowing that... Yeah, there's enemies here, but they're only living in the basement. Listen to that. Listen to the sound of the wind outside, whistling through the open walls of this building. Just realized there's a bird right there. I think this is I think this is what I need to see. Yes. Open door. There we go. I'm kind of proud of myself. I mean, I know I played this game before, but I didn't I, I don't remember stuff like this. Search the room for clues. Oh wow, this is there, there's actually a lot to this. Somebody set up shop here. This equipment is kind of like the stuff that was in the offices above the subway station. More pictures of me. Shotgun. Should I be taking this? Should I be taking the shotgun or am I better off with the stick? Well, there's my crowbar so I can get, uh... So I can get that locker upstairs open. Oh, I'm gonna have to abandon the stick. Image received. It looks like it's about me. It is. Did a quick scan. There's a few newspaper stories about your investigations. It's even got internal bureau newsletter articles on your career progress, promotions, postings, things like that. The last few pages are newspaper clippings about serial killers not being found. Some of these are circled in red with a big exclamation point beside them. Looks kind of like our serial killer X has been following your life and career pretty closely. Yeah, but why? Maybe he likes a challenge. Maybe he's chosen you to go up against and he's trying to understand his enemy. Maybe, maybe, but I don't know. Seems more to it than that. One way or another, we've got to get a move on. Now, before I... Take that crowbar. What did I do with that shotgun? I'm gonna go and thin the herd as much as I can before I leave this area. Where are you guys? This is what this game is about. Slowly patrolling the halls. Not knowing which corner someone's gonna jump from. I know they're here. I know they're here. The lights have all gone out. This, these bloodstains were not here before, I don't think. And this window wasn't broken before. It's Project Zomboid. Somebody cut themselves trying to climb through a window without clearing the glass. God, please. I can't take this anymore. My ears! My hands! Uh, it sounds kinda like that's right in my ear. I assume the room upstairs is opened up. Okay, so what am I carrying the shotgun for? At this point, I thought there were gonna be enemies on the way back, but I've come all this way and... I haven't even encountered, uh, I haven't even encountered an enemy yet. At this point, I'm gonna have to go all the way back and grab that crowbar to see what's in the locker, and I have a feeling that at the end of all that, there's just gonna be another shotgun in the locker. I have to say, it seems like there hasn't been a lot of thought put into where the weapons are placed. I mean, yes, there's different weapons to cater to different playstyles, but it seems like a lot of the time I'll need a weapon to progress. I'll get it, and then it'll throw an enemy at me that's holding that weapon. 
or it'll give me like some weapon that would be great to use but I can only use for a limited time like something like a gun and then it'll put some other weapon that I need to break open a door right next to it so I can't take it with me anyway All right, let's break you open and find out what the hubbub for you is about. It's another shotgun. Did I call it or did I call it? That is so ridiculous. Find an ax to cut free the piano and continue searching upstairs. Let me guess, there's going to be an enemy with that fire axe that I so desperately need. Okay, just send him at me. Just send him at me. Not you. I said someone with a fire axe. You look like a garbage man. And from what I understand, garbage men can actually make bank. So why are you in this state? Trying to conserve my shotgun shells. Because it feels to me like there's a boss fight coming. They're coming in the windows behind me. What type of weapon do you have? It looks like you're holding a crowbar. Which isn't what I need. Any other day I'd be ecstatic to see a crowbar. But it seems I just have to keep... Rocking you guys until one of you drops a fire axe. Oh, they've gone and barricaded this door. Well, at least they've narrowed the area that I can search in. Come on. Ah, it's another one of you leather boys. It's another Fonzie. Nope. I'd have preferred not to expend the shell, but I wasn't going to give you the chance to get a hit on me. Oh, there's a machine gun in here as well. Is one of you going to maybe give me a fire axe? Anybody? I don't know why the homeless are suddenly converging on this little farmhouse. Boom. Bang. Dead. That's a triple tap. Unfortunately, I feel like that shotgun blast was a little bit unnecessary. I only did it because I thought it would be faster than... Uh, than a taser, and I thought he would get a hit on me if I waited any longer. Anyone else? Look at him, he's just laying on that, uh, he's just laying on that shutter with his hand through it. I'm maybe a little bit overpowered. I've kind of just realized that I've come through the entire game, and I haven't really done a whole lot of blocking. Now, as I said before, in the Xbox 360 version, I eventually got good. That's a shovel. I love how I'm just massacring the homeless, waiting for them to drop something good. If you want rare loot spawns, killing the homeless is probably not the best way to do it. Wait, he's actually wearing a jacket that says Appleseed Orchard. He's an employee. Uh, but they said this place closed down years ago. No, I have, uh... I have done jobs at several theaters that closed down back when I was doing, uh... Back when I was doing stage videography. And you have an axe. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, back when I was doing stage videography, and I'm just trying to imagine the thought of one of these places closing down, as several of them did while I was on the job. And just deciding I'm going to haunt the place afterwards. I'm going to make that my new home and live in the walls. I 
I love how the sounds of the piano sliding around are appropriately loud and unpleasant. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab that shotgun, because to my knowledge, it still has three shells left, and I'm sure I can make use of them upstairs. Now, we know there's people up there, because somebody had to slide that piano down. What about the submachine gun? How much ammo is in this? 20 rounds! I'm finally gonna get my fully, my fully loaded submachine gun that was so rudely taken away from me at the end of the school. I never even got to fire that thing. Now I'm gonna want to aim for headshots because while cool, the submachine gun does not do a whole lot of damage. Where are you, bud? This is the room that was locked earlier. Now remember, SKX makes, uh, he kills ser serial killers using their own methods. The torturer's method was to torture people until they were driven to suicide. And it seems like that's exactly what's happened here. Transfer when ready. Transfer when ready? What is it, what is it that I'm even looking for? I can't kick that light out. Not that I'm sure if that would make any difference. What is it that I'm looking for? I mean, I, w I feel like the first place to start looking would be the body. Oh, the fingers. Come on, as I zoom in, it's pulling my view to the right. Hang on, I think I have to get a better angle. What can we see now? Come on, what am I supposed to see? It's pulling my view away from where I'm supposed to be looking. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do here. Hang on. Like I said, this is the kind of thing that in a normal Let's Play would get cut. But because it's a long play and I'm looking to edit, there we go. I had to find the exact right... No, now it's gone. This is so weird. Come on. Did I say weird? I meant annoying. Why is it pulling my view like that? Like the whole thing wants to drift to the right. I'm just kind of clicking and moving the camera around because I'm hoping I'll hit that sweet spot again. Now, last time it did it, it did it from right here. I don't understand what it is it wants me to see. Come on. Is something bugged? So I'm trying to get fingerprints. I feel like this isn't working the way it's supposed to. That time it just took it away. I'm so confused, guys. I'm so confused at what it wants me to do right now. So I can only use the collection tool. No, I can use the collection tool on this hand as well. Now it's fine. I guess I had to be standing at the exact right angle. God, how annoying. That could have used some more playtesting. Christ, it looks like serial killer X got to him, painted him up, tortured him, drove him to suicide, just like Anderson did to his victims. Our man must be near. Be careful. Your lab access is terminated as of now. Taxpayers wouldn't like you using resources when you're officially on suspension. Farrell, listen to me. Talk to Rosa. We're this close to getting the guy. I don't know what poor innocent schmuck you're chasing, but stop it now. Come into the Bureau. Give yourself up and we'll talk. There are things we need to discuss. I can't do it, Farrell. Then play it your way, but we'll find you. Count on it. Looks like you're on your own, Thomas. Thomas. 
Carl? Carl? Come on, Mr. Torturer. Don't you want to know what it feels like? We're not even half done. Carl. You know how this will end. I was put on this earth to bring you to justice. Your fate is in my hands. What am I, a whisperer? Oh, that is an excellent plan, though. Oh, and look at that. Here it is, taking real advantage of the reflections offered by whatever engine this is. Wait for it. Now perhaps you know what you have put others through. Although it makes you even more pathetic that you weren't brave enough to kill yourself. Now I'll have to do the job and make it look right. Didn't you just say we're not even half done? Now. Smack. You shouldn't have come here. Wait, for a brief moment it said pick up pump shotgun. For a brief moment, I had the option to pick up a shotgun. Yep, here we go. Five shells. I'm on the hunt now. Okay, how are you alive? Can I still tase? No, I can't. I don't have my taser anymore. Why did I put that down? Why would I do that? That's... Would a crippled man throw away his crutches before running in the Olympics? I don't think so. So why would I throw away my taser? Where are you at? Okay, I'm just gonna come over here and wait for you to come by again. If you're only gonna run in circles... It is now I who is on the offensive! Die, please. Nope, oh, that's the last of my ammo. I'm in a little bit of a pickle now. Alright, fireplace poker. Now keep in mind, if I'm gonna fight this guy head on, I'm gonna have to rely on blocking because I don't have my taser for whatever reason. This guy has now tanked five point blank shotgun shells to the torso. So we're kind of stretching the limits of believability at this point. And especially since this guy seems to be a fair bit more put together than the other guys we've encountered to justify their tolerance to pain. Where are you at, bud? I'm trying to listen for him, but I can barely hear him over the soundtrack. Ow. Get back here. I don't think there's any health I can... Oh, no, there's some health I can pick up right here. Okay, so that's my allowance for the rest of this segment. Now, if I die and respawn, will that shotgun still be on the ground? Honestly, it's a little bit annoying that he keeps running away like this. Maybe if I just wait in a corner. I mean, I'll have a pretty long way to run before he actually gets to me, so if I just keep looking left to right, I don't know if he hides at all. Ow! Hey, come on! Ow? It too, Van Horn? Listen to me. I am here to help. You are not yourself. You are not in your right mind. Let me help you. I know of what I speak. I... Sucks to suck. Once again, bad teamwork, then good teamwork. Now, here's the thing, though, is I kind of remember this being the end of the game, which means there's more beyond this? It says continue to the next chapter. I mean, I might just be moving into a cutscene, but... I guess let's find out. Summary. Federal agencies intervened. The governor, citing outside direction, has given command of the city's escalating crime problems to federal agencies... 
When questioned about the specific agencies involved by local press, no department names were forthcoming. This has left many to wonder if, the, if these phenomena are contained locally or are actually posing a national threat. Also, I love how I love how snarky this advice is. Use block to your advantage. Yeah, thanks, game. Welcome to consciousness, my friend. Though you won't enjoy it long. <sighs> we were good in the beginning. But you turned out to be kind of a failure, didn't you? <laughs> you still don't get it? I've been using you, Ethan Thomas. <laughs> Your you face is nowhere near as impressive as the environments. And used you to find the serial killers you so desperately sought, and then killed them. Okay. I must admit, I was a bit dramatic. Killed them the same way they'd killed their own victims. <laughs> a bit of fun, you know. <laughs> I got good at it. Shame it ruined you at the Bureau. But some things are unavoidable. Of course, since you're no longer going to be any help, there's no reason to go on this way. Now, how would you prefer to die? I didn't like the torturer's methods much. Too risky. Perhaps a slit across the throat, like the roadside carver. Ah, short and sweet. Or maybe the bone cutter. Neatly dissected the body, removed the internal organs, and labeled them for the police to find. Oh, yes, he was one of mine, too. We were so close to him, but I got there. Uh, first. dude, you got, uh, you got <laughs> owls in the rafters. You lost a finger. Uh, Outlast did it better. Find and destroy it. It has caused all this madness. Go, kill it, now! Well, that guy's motivations were a little bit underwhelming after all that, weren't they? Uh, grab two by four. <gasps> oh, I... I forgot all about this two by four fire. That's my light now. Ah, oh, and it's too bright. And here is where we start to see the introductions of the elements that everyone forgets were in this game. Oh, look at that. The other enemies are carrying torches, so we'll be able to see them moving in the distance. Yeah, it also means that if I were to pick up another weapon, if there even are other weapons, I wouldn't be able to see anything. Now, the other major uh, shakeup that's being given by this level is this is the very first outdoor environment we've been in. Actually, it's reminding me a lot of Outlast 2 in some ways. Ah, and there's a metal piece. Thank you. Ah, but we're starting back at the beginning. This is considered a whole new chapter. It's not considered the farm. Oh, you look like a big boy, but there's some health in there. Now would be a real good time for me to get better. Oh, come on! At blocking. See, the thing is, a successful block seems to have a little correlation to what's actually going on on the screen. Now, from what I remember, if you go for a headbutt, you actually lose a little bit of health yourself in the process. I don't know why you'd want to do that. I always just do the tried and true neck snap. But sometimes it's more expedient just to kick them on the ground. That'll get get you to kill as well. I'm actually like developing a stutter from this game. It's really more just due to me second guessing what I'm about to say. Ah yes, I can see you running off in the woods, even though I can clearly see that behind you is, like, the edge of the set. Ugh. 
I miss that taser. I miss that taser so, so much. Howdy. No, you don't. Any more of you? Any more of you coming up? Yep. Die. I was meant to be distracted by that one dude so that I wouldn't notice these guys. See, you saw that, right? That board was clearly all the way up, and he still got a hit on me. Again. It happened again. There seems to be very little correlation between the actual status of the object in front of me and the success or failure of a hit block. Come on. Each of you is like a lunch lady and a half. Come on. That was like all my health to one enemy. I can't... I, I'm not going to be able to beat this if it goes on this way. I'm actually starting to wonder at this point if I'm going to be able to change difficulty. That is just too much health on one guy. And I can't even tase him. So because a fire started in one stable, you guys have all somehow managed to burn yourselves to the point of disfigurement. Can I maybe slap these things and get them to catch fire? No? What am I meant to do here, then? Is there some way that I can... Is there some way that I can burn these boxes? It feels like that's what I'm supposed to do. Maybe burn that rope? Can I burn the rope and save us all? Oh, it looks like I can come up here. Once again, I'm... Especially in this large outdoor area, I find myself getting really, really frustrated by just how slowly I'm forced to move all the time. Hopefully there's some health in here. Yep, there we go. And a rifle! That's very helpful for us, but unfortunately it does mean we're not going to be able to see. Maybe not. Turn the power on? I doubt we're actually going to get any electric lighting out of this. Maybe this rifle is only good for these guys. Alright, right this way. I want to try to go for headshots, but that's a dangerous game, and... Yeah, it, it's not really worth continuing with just the one bullet, unfortunately. I actually feel like I should check that little shack one more time, because I really need every little bit of health I can get. Is there any more... No, it doesn't look like it. That's sad. I mean, you saw my fight with that other guy. He had so much health. He had so much health, and it was so hard to kill him. That pretty much any encounter is going to drain, like, every little bit I ha of health I have. It's like a boss fight after boss fight situation here. Please do it. Please drop and just end my life. In reality, I think all you're going to do is block the path behind me, right? There we go. Oh, there's actually a dude up there. I don't know how I missed you. I wonder if there's actually any way for me to run away from you. See, come on! What am I supposed to do about that? Yeah, run. Run, boy. Avoidance is going to be a big part of this. Just back up so that whatever hit he does isn't going to land. And I also have to keep in mind that my range is a lot farther than what I think it is. But that just plays even more into the fact that it's not very intuitive what will actually happen as a result of a given action. Like, to my eye, this seems like a really short object that I'm holding.
and yet I can hit them from surprisingly far away. Conversely, I can also be hit from surprisingly far away. Ah, uh, but here's some health. And there is that good old demon dentistry boy. Now if I pick up a burnt... I bet if I pick up a burnt piece of wood, I can reignite it in that fire. Ow. Stop that. And here's you. I wonder if those enemies have a lot of health. I wonder if those enemies have a lot of health, or if I just can't do a lot of damage with the 2x4. One would think that being clobbered over the head with a flaming object would do a bit more damage, but whatever. You're dead now. Can I pick up your stick like I could before? Oh, you've actually left a real corpse on the ground now. But you haven't dropped your sticks. I like those weapons so much. So this time the opposite thing happened. The sticks disappeared, but you did not. Alright, let me head back and grab another health kit off the back of that truck. Or cart, as the case may be. Okay. I think I'm starting to get the hang of the combat only now in the final chapter, or what I assume is going to be the final chapter more of these, so at least it acknowledges that the game gets hard at this point. Here comes you. I must say, they do look really creepy with their burned face illuminated by the torch from the underside, just running after me in the dark. This is actually one of those odd scenarios where it's actually scarier to see them coming from a distance. Come on! Oh, there's two of them. There's two of them. That's bad for me. And now there's one. Each one is like a mini-boss. Die. Die. Okay, getting the hang of this. This is Sprint. Believe it or not, this is Sprint. Now, am I meant to loop back around, or...? No. I'm still coming up through here. It's making me think that there's different ways I can go, but there really aren't. It's a linear progression, and I just want to stick to that. Yeah, it really... Hi. It's strange. We've been on all these tight, cramped spaces this whole time. Oh, it's Cletus and his redneck gang. I hope they don't see this burning torch I'm holding from around the corner. I don't really feel much like ambushing them. They're definitely going to get a couple of shots off. And there's two of them. Maybe I can club you in the back of the head, no. Come on, that's that's like all my health. What do you want me to do about that? Please be out of ammo. Come on. Die, please. I can't believe it actually expected me to run out there and bring a torch to a gunfight. Eight bullets. I don't think the times they fire actually correlates to what's going to be in the gun when you get around to them. All right, grab that health kit, and grab the other health kit. No, different rifle. This one with ten rounds. Okie doke. I don't know where that second rifle came from, but I will happily take it. And of course, that clearly means it's about to send more my way. But I'll have to remember that I can always go back and pick up more. There's still two, or, there's still one or two more rifles on the ground back there. Bang, bang. So bang. The only cost is that I'll have to run all the way back for how slow that is. Is there someone running up behind me? No. There is a machine gun. 
Oh, that was so stupid of me. Wasting that bullet was so, so stupid of me. Yep, die. Die, please. Thank you. Only two bullets left. I'm gonna have to go back and grab that machine gun. Waste. Waste of a shot. Die! Let me pick up that machine gun and blow you away. What's left? 14 bullets. Let's aim a little bit high. There's more right there, but I have to be careful of the ones coming up behind me. They're my primary concern right now. Crap. Is there anything else I can pick up? Right there. Die. There we go. Save myself a couple of bullets. Still 14 rounds left. This is one of those games where it seems like uh, ammo loss isn't actually tied to the sound effects. So it can sound like I fired a lot more rounds than I really did. Hello, buddy. I feel like Indiana Jones right now. Ooh, sticks. And your sound seems to be glitching out. And it's not stopping by me kicking your ragdoll across the map. Now the question, do I continue with the gun or do I pick up the stick? I think pick up the stick, because it's going to run out of ammo fairly quickly. It might enable me to kill one enemy early. Uh, but then again, maybe that's enough. Maybe that's enough to justify it. But I don't know if I'm going to get another stick, and it's much better than the 2x4. Metal piece. That one's not actually... Oh, no, there, there are uh, eye drawings on the wall there. Never mind. I thought somebody was skittering outside, but I think it's just that guy's corpse. Screwing up, and here's the stick. We had to pick one up anyway. Really confused about the mechanics as far as that's concerned. Oh, boy. Sticks and health. Sticks and health. It definitely wants me to have this stuff. I really hope this room stays open. Jump down so I can kill you, please. It's giving me a lot of health. Which means it expects me to use it. You guys? Stomp! Stomp, please. Come on! Come on! You can't... I hate trying to time these blocks out. Just die, please. Don't you grab my health, that's my health. Come on! I block when he raises the weapon, and then... It's like they swing sooner when you block. Come on. Yep. This is great gameplay here. I told you, don't grab my health. That's my health. I'm certainly going through it at a decent pace. Ow! I can't, like, defend against these slow weapons. Uh, it's just a gauntlet. It's just a wave fight. Can I let these guys hurt each other? Yes, do that. No, come on! Come on, this is so unfair. This is so unfair. You're just throwing so much crap at me at once. I hate boss fights like this. I hate flunky bosses. Truly hate them. Alright, more health, more health, more health. Give me health, give me health. No, I need the stick. Weaken him by removing metal pieces from his body. Okay. These hits that he lands on me don't seem to be correlated to the actual animation. I wonder if that's like a frame rate thing, but I'm blocking as he swings and it's not doing anything. Come on, come on. Can I go back in this room and get that health? No. So I'm basically, I'm basically out of health and I have a feeling it's not gonna respawn it. Let me guess, I have to play through that entire thing again. Please tell me. Come on, this isn't gameplay. 
Start sending the guys in. Send them in. Thank you. Two in one hit. I have... Six total health packs to use. See, I can't defend if you hit me immediately after I hit you. There's a lot of fake difficulty that it's throwing at me right now. All of a sudden. I can't anticipate that. This thing has, like, no block ability. Alright, now heal up. Die, please. This is really just pissing me off right now. I feel like I might almost be better just picking up a conduit or something. Something that has better block. Does the fire axe have better block? No, it actually has worse block. And I don't have my taser, and it's throwing at me the most enemies yet. Now, this- see- What is my reach? I don't understand. It's so inconsistent. Come on. Like, the point in the swing when it would- when you would intuitively raise your thing to block isn't when you're supposed to block. That's the problem. Come at me. Come on. Oh, these fake-outs! I hate them so much! And the recovery time from a hit is, like, so inconsistent as well. And there's your- you drop your weapon, which means you get da guaranteed damage on me. Again! You get it twice, and now I can't see. I love combat mechanics that are basically the equivalent of just taking the controller out of your hands. And now you're gonna jump down. I need to get hits on you quickly. Oh, I'm holding a 2x4. I'm not even holding the stick anymore. See, if I... If I block when you start to swing, it won't block. I have to, like, wait until you're midway through it, which is so unintuitive. Now, can I please back away so that I can pick up some health? Thank you. Boss fight isn't over. I have to grab shoulder using the one key for some reason. Now it said weaken it by removing metal pieces from your body, but let me guess. Let me guess. Now you're gonna send your funkies back in, right? Yep. Remind me again how this is gameplay. Oh, I see you up there. I'm meant to go up there now. There's a fire axe, but I don't want the fire axe. It does more damage and it has more reach, but it has worse block. I need something with better block. This large plank has worse block. The conduit has the same, so there's really... There's really nothing I can do in that regard. Alright, hopefully this serves as a checkpoint. There's hands reaching down from the ceiling. And it's like that one scary YouTube video. You know the one. Unless you don't, then you don't. But if you do, you do. Thing is, like... Yes, I can try and avoid, but it didn't even look like you were in the middle of an attack right there. The point when I need to block doesn't seem to be correlated with the animation at all. Like, sometimes it doesn't look like the weapon is anywhere near me, but that's when... that's when the block occurs. Okay, let me... grab your spine and remove some metal. And there goes your spine, so you should be pretty much dead at about this point. But I have a feeling that's not the end. In game design, things always come in threes.
Well, at least I can grab a health kit. Seems I've been sent to the Shadow Realm. Your flunkies are all dead, right? Come on! Come on! Die, please! I can't anticipate these attacks. There is nothing I can do to block these. Maybe I can just stun lock you forever. Grab jaw, thank you. And that's how I killed Dr. Satan. Seriously, doesn't he look like Dr. Satan from House of a Thousand Corpses? Yeah, that's about my only takeaway from this. Now remind me why we're trying to save this guy. He was responsible for the bad teamwork. It was SKX that was actually doing the good teamwork. I, I guess he got himself out. No, not to the Bureau, not to your old life. Thomas, you have looked into the face of hate, the visage of evil. Know that hate is in your soul, too. It is, sadly, everywhere. Mastering one's fear and controlling one's hatred is perhaps the most difficult thing one can do. Well, at least it's over. It's dead, and the killings will stop. Stop the car. No, no, you still don't understand. He's done unspeakable things, even though those he killed were killers themselves. But he isn't responsible. He's not in his right mind. He's... Stop the goddamn car now! Open the trunk. Thomas, don't! He was a good boy. We were all good people. We were able to fight it back, most of us. My nephew was not as strong. He fell victim and destroyed so many things. We fought to save him. I, I, I must continue to do so. I don't care whether the sick fuck is in his right mind or not. Think of what you are doing! Both of you have a chance for redemption. Redemption? Listen, old man, you used me just like he did. You you used me to save your precious nephew, a, a serial killer. You're, you're no better than he is. Now I'm going to not shoot him, only because it seems like that's what whatever Dr. Satan is wants me to do. Oh, whatever. Never mind. <laughs> See, I, I only... the main reason I wasn't going to shoot him was because I remember in Condemned 2, I'm pretty sure he had a gunshot wound to his head. But I guess that happens either way. I really didn't remember what the different endings were. You really know how to impress a lady, Thomas. Around here, people. I don't know what would have happened if I had shot him. Why the lay low routine? I've been cleared of the murders, but my suspension has got me thinking. I guess I just I don't know who to trust anymore. Yeah, tough break. Man, you look like crap. Yeah, I've been better. You said you found something interesting? Yes. Very odd. A cult seems to be behind all this. We can tie them to the deaths of the serial killers investigated by your department. A cult? The man responsible was Leland Van Horn. 
Yes, I know. He manipulated both you and us. But where is he? We have no Leland Van Horn in custody. He... Uh, look, I explained all of this in my deposition to the Bureau. But a lot of unanswered questions remain, Thomas. Which brings me to why I'm here. Maybe we could make better sense of all this if a few more were found, but under the circumstances, you did well. <sighs> anyway, the results suggest a group may be behind all this, and lots of other criminal activity around the city. Do you know anything about this? Who these people are? Are you affiliated with them in any way? Rosa, can I trust you? Of course you can trust me, Thomas. We've been through a lot together. Look, I have no idea what any of it means. Something weird, something unexplainable happened during my investigation, but truthfully, the questions you ask, I, I just, I can't answer. I'm sorry, Rosa. I'm sorry too, Thomas. I really am. Take care of yourself. It ends on a cheap jump scare. And that was Condemned Criminal Origins. I hope you enjoyed, and if you're watching this on Halloween, I hope you have a happy Halloween. And that's this out of the way. So I think this game... Even though it's not the greatest game ever, I think it was definitely very, very ambitious for its time. And it's had a lasting legacy on some of the philosophy that's gone into game design as far as horror games go, even now into, into the present day. I can't help but feel like there's a lot of influence here in games like Resident Evil 7. I mean... Yeah, I feel like a lot of what it's doing or at least a lot of its innovation is in the department of how to approach world design in having those realistic environments and having those detailed environments that are properly scaled and actually feel lived in and how that goes on to user immersion and enhancing the horror experience uh, but anyway there's not much more I can say that I haven't already said during the game itself and a lot of people are already tuning out anyway after this like what six or seven hour video so I'll let you get going. And if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.